Yes, I'll call this meeting to order at 6.32, Monday, November 9th, regular meeting of the Rochester Stockbridge Unified District. Uh, we just some uh, announcements. Uh, Jamie is quite sick and will not be joining us tonight. Um, uh, he's in the midst of getting tested um, for both strep and um, uh, uh, COVID obviously, because the uh, symptoms could be the way. Let's, he said he was sorry to say it, but he was hoping it was strep. Um, but uh, we wish him well and hope he um, will be able to join us soon and be back soon. Um, we also have tonight uh, Justine Kavakis, uh, first uh, meeting as board, as a board member from Stockbridge. And um, We'll talk a little bit more about that um, at board comment. Uh, adjustments to the agenda. I have one um, at 7.4. I would like to talk about in discussion. I would like to talk about uh, merger uh, agreement uh, review. So I'll add that in at 7.4. Any other adjustments to the agenda? Just sending a child off, that's all. There being none, let's move on to timekeeper. Amy, would you be willing to be our timekeeper again? Good. Um, I've sort of gone through, I see consent agenda, five minutes. Uh, board comment, we'll give it 10 to 15. I don't know if we'll need that much. I'm, I'm, I've been noticing as I keep track of um, sections uh, that we're tending to run over on almost everything. So I figured let's be realistic and uh, give a little more time. So I'm going to give 10 to 15 for board comment. Uh, reports to the board 25. Obviously, we won't um, be hearing from the superintendent, but we have his report. Uh, we'll hear from the principals, the business manager. And then, Carl, am I correct that you could lead us through the policy committee? Is that correct? That's a thumbs up. It is, sir. Sorry, uh, yeah, with your, your background, it's a little hard to see the thumbs up. So maybe in right in front of your face will work like that. <laughs> Good. Um, uh, I'm gonna give you maybe about, let's say 10 minutes for principals, 10 minutes for business manager and 10 minutes for policy. And if we use less, great. But I think that seems a little reasonable. Uh, discussion items, uh, the budget, I'd say 15 to 20. Um, and please, does anyone jump in if you feel these are times are not reasonable? Uh, the board statement on current state of sale of the high school building. Uh, we have actually two things to cover in there. I'm going to say mm, 20 minutes on that. And then the Rochester High School building report. I'm going to say another uh, 15 on that. And then the agreement on the merger. 10 to 15 um, action items. I'm not sure, I'm a little confused. I'm sorry, Jamie's not here because I think we're gonna have to take action in 7, 1, 7 2 and 7 3 before we can actually do some of those things we want to do there. So I think our actions actually gotta be moved up to there. Um, I don't know that there's any new hires unless um, we hear about that. Uh, and then obviously let's leave a good healthy amount of time Let's say 20 minutes to, for public comment. Um, I didn't notice how many we had on. Let me just see uh, quickly. Let's see. One, two, three. Right now we've got three. So I think, I think 20 minutes sounds, oops, sorry, not going away. 20 minutes sounds about right. Um, as I say, this may be longer than we need. Uh, then we have executive session, return to session. I'm not sure if we'll need the negotiations or not. Um, uh, we'll see about that. Okay, the second one. All right, moving on to consent agenda. Uh, we have <clears throat> two uh, regular minutes, 4.1 approved minutes of Tuesday, October 6th, 2020 regular. 4.2, approve the minutes of Monday, October 19th, 2020 special. And we have no minutes from that yet. Or did you post 
Jenny, did you post that today? They, they just got distributed today. That's what I, I just thought I saw that email. Yes, correct. And uh, then there was no, I'm not sure why it's still in there, but there was no November 3rd meeting. Right? Yeah, that was the election. Uh, that's right. There is no minute. So there's no meeting there. So I think we can, we can't, we don't need to approve them because they don't exist. So we'll just, uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes. Oh, wait, Bonnie, you had one correction. Was that, was that to do with the minutes? You sent me September 1. No, oh, what's that? You're, you're like on here twice. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Sorry. Bonnie was on here twice. She must have logged in. Oh, gotcha. two times, and so when she unclicked her mic, it was giving wow. herself feedback. Okay. Um, I no, but that's to September minutes, so I think we're okay. Let's go ahead. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of October 6, twenty twenty, and approve the minutes of October nineteenth, twenty twenty. Anybody so, move? so moved by Carl? A second it, please. I'll second them. Amy, thank you. Amy seconded. All in favor, signify by saying aye. For this, I'll take a thumbs up in the face. But I need to see Jenny. Well, Jenny, I'll need an aye from you. Aye. And um, Justine, your, your first vote. <laughs> you there, Justine? Yes, I'm, I'm here. Okay, great. Excellent. Thank you. Thumbs up, please, uh, if you so approve. Excellent. Thank you. We've approved this consent agenda. All right, we're now into board comment. Um, Amy, would you like to start? I know you have. Uh, sure, yeah, I have a, a couple of, of comments. Um, first, I want to just say thank you to all of our, uh, our administration and our teachers and staff for all the hard work that they have done um, to get keep our school going and, and get it up and running and keep it going. You guys are doing an excellent job, thank you. Um, so uh, at our last meeting, we reviewed uh, the community survey and took some time to, to take a look at it a little more in depth. Um, I, did, uh, I did feel that the survey reinforced a lot of what I had already thought, um, but I am very concerned about the percentage of people who are, are against the the merger that there was 39% that agree or start strongly agree uh, with the idea of unmerging. Um, so uh, that was one of my really big concerns takeaways. Uh, you know, we had merged together because the state created Act 46, which mandates school mergers. Uh, because of the threat of loss of state funding, the possibility of forced mergers, our towns banded together to keep our local schools to be able to keep them. Uh, and we have successfully done that. We've kept the tax rate actually lower than what was projected in our, um, in our articles of agreement. In our articles agreement, we projected that FY20 tax rate with the tax incentives would be $1.72. And our actual FY20 tax rate with incentives is $1.66. So, I feel we have been very successful with that. Um, we have found efficiencies and we've created relationships across our, our schools. So I am concerned with this percentage of the community that um, does not support this merger. And I would like to really know a little bit more why. Um, and, you know, my initial feeling is that, that there's community members that don't support the continued merger because maybe they feel that there's an unbalanced financial burden on one town or the other, uh, or they feel that both school campuses should look identical with space and programming. Uh, one piece of our articles of agreement states that the new district must support and promote the ongoing identities of both schools so that we are individuals and we, uh, we support each, each, each individual identities. Um, so we, we, you know, we have supported the each community's values, and uh, each campus will will look a little bit different. But 
the district will always support the students and provide accessing to access to as much program as possible. I feel that it, the possible feeling of an unbalanced financial burden is something that we need to address and evaluate and see if there is any basis to, to that um, public feeling. Now, maybe I'm completely off with my uh, interpretation of, of some of these feelings. And so there I go back to my question. What, what is it that, the that a portion of the community does not support about the merger? And, and I think this maybe ties into our later discussion um, that you've put on the agenda, Ethan. So thank you. Um, OK, so then uh, segueing into uh, another comment, kind of <laughs> different, <laughs> yes, um, is that I was wondering if the board would be at all interested in entertaining the possibility of renting or leasing out space in the high school building until a change of ownership occurs. Uh, there is potential interest from local groups like Rasta who have equipment they may be looking to store and Division Rochester who is looking to lease a space for uh, a maker space. I have no details. There's nothing that has been discussed in depth with, with these groups or any other groups. I'm simply asking uh, if, uh, yeah, and I'm not asking for us to go into an agreement at this time with, with anybody. I'm just simply wondering if the board is open to this possibility. Thank you. Ethan, you're muted. Thank you. Uh, Carl and Jenny, if you would like to speak to uh, the survey or have other board comment. Carl first. Yeah, oh, Jenny, go ahead. Jenny, go ahead. Um, I think um, I definitely agree with Amy. I'm not sure what the best way to, um, you know, other than the, these meetings to kind of get input like that. But I think that would be, um, you know, I kind of have the same feelings of what potentially might be some of those reasons. But instead of us assuming what those reasons are, I think that would be good to somehow um, get that sort of information. Um, I think this, the second one, I think that's worth um, talking about. I don't know how that would work in terms of, you know, logistically and liability wise, but I think it's certainly something, um, something that we can talk about. And then sort of unrelated to those, I just wanted to give a shout out to, to Bonnie. I listened in, I wasn't at the actual Zoom meeting, but I listened into um, the meeting you gave about the math um, kind of getting parents involved and just kind of um, kind of um, reinforcing um, you know math learning and I thought it was a great presentation I'm not sure um, I don't think I had actually posted it anywhere but I'm not sure what the attendance was but I thought that was um, was a great thing to do to kind of get parents thinking about it I know I forget what it was at the time but there was one thing that um, kind of sparked my interest of a question, you know, to ask myself about, you know, helping my child who's doing uh, virtual learning. So um, I thought it was helpful. I just wanted to say I thought that was a great thing that you guys did. Thanks, Jenny. And Carl, by the way, and uh, Ethan, by the way, I'm back. For some yep. reason, I couldn't get in, but Ray worked his magic. I see you now. Great. Thank you. Carl. Uh, do you have board comment or responses to the survey? Um, yeah, I think, you know, I, I, I certainly think the, the, the percentage that uh, Amy is referencing is, is, you know, disturbing. Um, I think that, you know, it's important that we don't, um, we don't try to assume why people think what they think. And we, we need to, you know, we, we instead need to, uh, uh, you know, find a way to get that input um, directly from them. Um, I, I often feel like my track record at guessing what people are thinking or what they want is is, is kind of poor. So I prefer, you know, actual data. Um, I, I, I and, and I'm remembering that this is what I thought one of the things we were going to be covering if we ever did have uh, um, community meetings when we're talking about mediated meetings or just group group meetings. I think, you know, having that that, that conversation about 
uh, you know, where this feeling of imbalance comes from and all, all, all that and where this, this, this disappointment in the results of the merger comes from, um, I think would be a valuable conversation uh, uh, to have. Good. Thank you, Carl. Um, Justine, do you have any comments? Obviously, I don't know if you've seen the survey um, uh, or not, um, but if you had comments on it, what would you like to say? Yes, I, I reviewed the um, what was available in the most recent meetings for the results of the survey. And I think it would be really helpful um, to do what Carl was just suggesting about uh, the com a mediated situation in a community meeting. I think um, from the conversations and communications I've had with the Stockbridge residents, I feel a lot of it is a lack of voice. I think it would be a nice opportunity for them to have a forum and hash it all out and um, kind of go over the um, the parts, the sections um, of the agreement that might be vague or confusing, and it might help um, the board understand where folks might not have understood fully what they were voting for or even responding to the survey about. So I think that would be really helpful to have um, some sort of organized meeting and I, and I would be very interested in being part of that. Thank you. Excellent, thank you. Um, my comments, uh, uh, always the optimist. Um, uh, what I took from the survey is um, that people want the schools in their communities. And that has been my goal from the first day I got on the school board and why I decided to step up for chairman is that I want to work as hard as possible to keep both of these schools going and vibrant and active and also to have a voice in keeping them going as opposed to sending my child, putting him on a bus and sending him to some school where I only have the input of the parent and not as a school board member. Um, so I'm very encouraged by that, seeing that people want those schools in their community. But I do think we're, we're starting to ask the right questions and I'm hoping that this merger discussion, um, merger agreement discussion, and I'm thinking we may actually make it a little broader in terms of what it talks about, could be a very useful tool. Um, the other thing I wanna do is just take a moment to uh, thank uh, Keith for his short tenure on the board, but also uh, really useful. Um, we had some great conversations and you'll see, we'll be working with some of his, um, uh, uh, an article he posted uh, about our intentions with the high school building. And uh, I'm really glad that he's staying involved um, and was uh, talking with me just this afternoon. But I want to thank him for his time. Uh, much appreciated. Um, the only other thing I want to say is uh, I, I really do, we're going to have, um, I, I, I want to hear opposing voices. I think it's really useful. Amy framed what she was interested in in the form of a question. And I think that's really useful to ask questions that then in board comment, we can hear from people and they can answer, give us their answer anyway. And I think that's very useful. But I think it's very important um, that we hear the different voices. And we really, as board members, seek out and talk to people in our communities so we get those voices and really uh, feel like we're representing our communities. Okay, good. Thank you. There being no other board comment, we will now move on to reports to the board. Um, obviously, we'll skip over 6-1. I don't know if that, that will be included in the notes. I'm, I'm not sure of the procedure so that the public can see his report. Um, yes, because it's part of the articles and documents, correct? It's part of the package that we received, so. Um, oh, and that would be part of what Ray, Ray's got on his, his invitation. So anybody yeah. can look at that, okay. Yeah. Um, do, were there any questions that we wanna go on the record about in terms of Jamie's report? Anybody? Jenny? Oh, there it is. Thank you, Ray. Okay, there, have you, yeah, if we haven't looked, do you want to take a moment? Let's just take a moment to look over. I know Jamie is doing a good job of getting many of our reports out early enough so that we can look at them before. And Justine, that's just one thing to think about in terms of taking a look at these reports that come out before the meeting. 
so that we're prepared. It's one of his, um, Jamie's uh, tactics for keeping meetings moving and more efficient. Any comments? Carl? Uh, no, I think uh, I, I think his uh, uh, report is 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 clean. Okay. Um, you know, we used to we used to uh, uh, sometimes actually take a motion to to uh, attack you know accept the report and attach it to the minutes, um, but oh. I don't I feel that that's you know you know necessary. I think I mean it's it's included with the packet, so it's 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 already distributed. I don't think we need to to, to do anything okay. to adopt it. And I think. I don't have any questions. Thank you. Good. Jenny? Any I questions? don't have any questions or comments. Great. Thank you. Amy? No, I'm good. Thank you. And Justine? The only comment I have is um, I did read this earlier, and I, it's just tremendous to think about being a teacher right now and, and going through all of that in that report and trying to um, adjust to outdoor learning and uh, implementing these things. It's just really amazing to me. And I just wanted to say that out loud because it's impressive. Good. Thank you. Very good. Uh, let's move on to the principal's reports. Uh, Bonnie, you want to go first or who's who's up? Um, I don't think there's anything super exciting in there just a general update but uh nothing that really jumps out as we should be flagging for people uh we continue to work on our literacy coaching and literacy support on both campuses as well as bonnie has been doing quite a bit of math instruction um with our teachers on some in-service days and we'll continue to do so um, okay. There was one bullet point that didn't have any discussion underneath. I was wondering if there's a reason for that or if there should be something there. Uh, Actually, we it, sometimes we kind of try to figure out which bullet point to put them under. I think this particular month, we just didn't find anything to put under that one. We, we sort of put the major activities under other bullet points. But that's a good question, Justine. Usually there's there's something under each bullet point, but this month there is not under that one. I mean, they, they do kind of overlap, so I can see where that might be hard. Yeah, there's a couple that kind of overlap pretty pretty significantly. Um, I do have a question. Uh, I noticed that uh, it says all of our um, HVAC, um, uh, I don't know if you scroll down just a little bit more, um, the, that the proposals to Efficiency in Vermont have been approved. Does that include the additional one with the preschool that we were concerned about? Um, the the HVAC grant is not going to pay for that one, but Jamie authorized that we go ahead because it's essential that we have fresh air in that classroom also. The way that the HVAC grant was written, it is it only works on projects that benefit the entire school building. And the preschool in Rochester, because it was an addition, it's kind of like its own little, little building there sitting oh. on the end. Okay, because I was in... Um... A, a budget meeting of with a um, with a, a webinar, and they'd said that Efficiency Vermont has an additional uh, four million dollars that they can use towards um, uh, these projects. Originally, it was thirteen million, and they are they are authorized to, to for another four. So, um, if it was a financing thing, I wanted to let you guys know that they are, have uh, increased that limit. Right, and they were encouraging folks um, who had had projects um, turned down that sort of fit the whole building. So I think that's where that money will, will go. Okay. Our fingers are still crossed that uh, the units arrive in time to do the work in December. Uh, there is a timeline on the funds and we continue to be told that we're, uh, by, by the contractor and the engineer, that we're still on track for uh, doing the work at Rochester, which is the bulk of the work left to do uh, over the December um, break. Right. Um, in this meeting, uh, Brad James stated that 
um, if it can't be done through no fault of our own, like there, the supply wasn't there, um, it, is ex it, it can be extended. Yeah, I, I think they realize that, Amy, when so many schools receive funding to do similar projects, as you can imagine, there was this uh, wave of requests for equipment that just washed out over the, the contractors and the manufacturers. So I had heard at the end of last week that they were um, going to extend that. I haven't seen it in writing, but I've heard they were going to extend that uh, that funding timeline. Well, I as well heard it from Brad Jane, so as long as you have like an invoice that says the work is going to happen and just because from no, as he said, no, no fault to your own, um, which we all know supply is just not the, the way it was before. <laughs> right. Right. But okay. fortunately, at this point, we're still being told that that we are on timeline to meet that original deadline. So hopefully uh, that's where we'll end up. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Any further questions before I have a, a couple? Or the principles. Um, one, uh, Bonnie, I just want to talk, and I think, Lindy, you and I mentioned this. We talked about tents and the idea it was sort of good to get a dry run of what's like with snow on them. Um, and that Lindy came up with a, they, they, Stockbridge came up with a good way to get removed tents. We found that a roof weight worked pretty well. Uh, I'm going to continue putting the ends on the tents so a little bit more enclosed and also uh, snow won't blow. But I think the principle right now is we're looking to try and get to the Christmas break. Um, and then uh, that might be pushing our luck going any farther than that after the tents. So um, Ethan, I actually had a teacher come up with a new idea this afternoon. Okay. Um, the idea of just using any outdoor space that's in the sun when it's gorgeous like this, because the tent with all the sides on it sometimes keeps the cold in instead oh, no. of the cold cold out. So we were trying to find ways to be flexible to still be outside, but not necessarily be confined to the tent of the space. So I, I, I just wanted to share that out with people that brain wheels are turning. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I totally support that. And I think, you know, it, again, I want to reiterate this promise that we made that this was how we were bringing these kids back was to get them outside. I think there are lots of good ways um, at the Stockbridge, whether it's putting a tarp on the backdrop to stop wind, so that you're just behind the backdrop, you know, and the wind's coming from another direction. I think that's the thing to be out of the wind when the cold is, is, is helpful where you can be. Um, but certainly I'm open to more discussions. And um, I know that uh, Donna's working on some possibilities of other structures as well with, uh, um, with Greg Ryan. So um, I, 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 and with, there's also some ideas that came out about using the soccer goals, pushing them together and making slightly more st um, solid structures. So I, I, I'm 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 game. I'm certainly game. But uh, let's. I think I think we're we're we'd be very lucky to make it to the Christmas break with the tents we have now. Um, uh, but um, let's. You know, I'm certainly there to support you. Whatever you whatever you need. Thank you. Thanks, but, Ethan. Um, Bonnie, just one other thing, because uh, I know we're going to get questions about this. Uh, could you talk about the ad that was placed today? Um, for the uh, the uh, person looking at the high school building, for the for the one hour position, yes. Please um, just explain. Sure, uh, the consultant that Jamie brought, you remember back in September, he mentioned he was going to bring someone to walk through the high school to try and help him get a better handle uh, on the condition of the high school, and that individual. Um, and I went back and just to check the minutes to make sure that Jamie had mentioned it. And in our September 1st minutes, he mentions where that person um, recommended that someone walk through the building each day uh, as it gets colder so that we don't have a, you know, pipe in some obscure closet that sits and runs water for, you know, two or three days until someone walks in. And he also recommended that we uh, install um uh, sensors in the building. So when the temperature drops below X, uh, a call goes out and uh, someone knows that we've got a heat issue in the building. So uh, that is the position that is in the, uh, that was in the paper. Uh, I, we advertised it from uh, like November to March. And um, that's the whole goal of the position. I mean, the building is empty. No one's going in and out of it except the small part where the washer and dryer is on a daily basis. 
and he did not think it was wise that uh, we not have someone performing this daily walkthrough. I mean, and we do. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Ethan. Yeah, no, I was just going to follow up. Um, and and um, and this our present custodial staff is is not able to do this. With the additional with the additional COVID cleaning, um, I really looked closely at that schedule to see if there was an hour during the day that she wasn't already doing something, and and there just simply wasn't. Uh, that's what I, because Jamie asked me the same question as we move forward with this position of um, would it be possible to have uh, the, you know, the custodian who's there now do that. And I just felt that if with the additional um, cleaning and other sorts of expectations we have on, on that position right now, that it just wasn't feasible or something else would have to go. Mm -hmm. I, I guess I should never say never because you can always do it, but it's just a matter of balancing out what you're going to, you know, what you're not going to do. Um, and it probably, I imagine it's uh, uh, confidential to talk about a dollar amount for this. Um, yes. Okay. Thank you. I mean, we could at some point, but not, not right now. Yep. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, any further questions for our principals? Good. Thank you. Let's move on to our business manager, please. Hello, Tara. Hi, everyone. Hello. So I sent my report and Amy stole my thunder on my updates. <laughs> we found out late Thursday night that, as Amy expressed, that the state has authorized additional funds to Efficiency Vermont. So we are working with our districts and with our representative at Efficiency of Vermont to find out if any of our buildings can get additional funds based on the original submissions and work scopes that were submitted. So we are working closely in monitoring that. Other than that, the auditors are continuing to get through our FY20 audit. They're physically scheduled. They've been doing everything remotely at this point. They're physically scheduled to be in our buildings next week. So hopefully that will go smoothly. And then lastly, just a reminder, uh, if you did not get your W4 into me for your board stipend, please do so as soon as possible. Anybody who had theirs in was paid October 30th. The next round will be this week, and then there wouldn't be another one until December. That's all I've got for you for the time being. Any questions? You're muted, Ethan. Tara, I sent, I sent you my W-2. Did you get it? Yes, Ethan. Very good. Thank you. Further questions? I know we'll have uh, more when we get to the budget section. Um, any questions on the business manager's report? Jenny? I think that's it. Up to Nothing? Now. Okay. Justine? Nothing? Carl? I'm good. Thank you, Tara. Uh, Amy? No, thank okay. you. I think we're all set. Thank you very much, Tara. I'm so used to being an underling. I'm muting myself all the time. Uh, Carl, would you please lead us through the policy committee policies that will be warned for adoption at the 12-1-2020 meeting? I assume that's our meeting, correct? Yeah, yes. Cool. Cool. Um, so we have what? Let's see, three, seven uh, different policies. Mm -hmm. um, most of them are uh, recommended policies that uh, um, you know the, the Vermont School Board Association puts forward, and then we we consider and uh, uh, modify. Um, the first one is the board superintendent uh, relationship. Um, it talks about the idea that the board uh, establishes and governs through policies um, and that the superintendent is the uh, uh, actual CEO, if, if you were, of the, uh, of the district that, you know, it, it kind of clarifies again that the, that the school board is more like a board of directors and the, the, the superintendent is, is the CEO. Um, that's uh, A24. Uh, B22 is a policy about uh, public uh, complaints about personnel. 
Carl, um, can I just ask you one question about 824, please? Sure. Does it distinguish, and I, I've just, uh, I, I'll be honest, I haven't read this clearly, but I know you know it better than I do. Does it distinguish between the board relationship to the individual board and the board relationship uh, to Jamie and the full board relationship to Jamie and what that, how that is different? I, I'm not sure I understand your question. You mean like the difference of the Stockbridge, the, the, the RSUD board's relationship to Jamie and the SU board's relationship to Jamie? Uh, no, the um, WRVSU, you know, the full, all the full boards, when we have a full board meeting or executive board meeting. Right. How that is different in the relationship between those, between us and Jamie. Right. But does it just talk about boards in general? Right. Um, the idea, the, the, the idea is that the, uh, um, it, the, the policy is more in general and it applies since he, he does work for us, but he also works for for the the, the SU as a whole. Mm -hmm. And I want to say, oh, I can't remember. The, it was there. There was a, a, an act about five or six years ago that brought together that, that consolidated a lot of the powers under the SU. Um, uh, and that was one of the things that was established that the the the, the superintendent works for the SU uh, uh, board directly. Um, of which the Rochester Stockbridge Board is a member. So we could not unilaterally hire our own superintendent, for example. Um, but in general, the policy is more stating that we're kind of a, we, 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 we kind of have an arms, arm's length relationship with the SU, with, with the superintendent rather, that we can evaluate him annually, but we really can't, and we can certainly advise him and, and, and give him thoughts, but we cannot necessarily um, second guess his individual decisions either the SU board or our board. The idea is, is, again, it establishes that relationship of us as kind of a board of directors that hires a person and then gives them the authority to, to, to do the work without us being able to, uh, you know, lean over his shoulder and-, and uh, micro, micro manage. Micro micromanage, exactly. That's, that's, that's the word I'm looking for, thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. And does this put us more towards um, governance Paul? Um, uh, shoot. <laughs> um, a, a formal, a formal policy governance model. Yeah, it, does, yeah. <laughs> it, it, yeah. it, we, it, it doesn't talk about ends and means. Okay. Um, really, just what it what it tries to clarify is the is is the more arm's length relationship uh, between the day to day operational decisions of the superintendent and the board itself. Okay. Thank you. Um, Please carry on. Next, uh, there's a policy about public public uh, complaints about personnel, which is a a fairly it's, it's a fairly straightforward policy. It basically says that uh, um, the uh, uh, decision tree goes from the, 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 the building principal to the superintendent to the board, um, which is why in previous board meetings we've had conversations about how the board needs to stay neutral because at, at the, uh, the, 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 the appeal to the board step that's at the bottom of what Ray is displaying now, um, at, at uh, you know, if a board member had been directly conversing or getting involved in the details of a decision, they would probably have to recuse themselves from being part of a board appeal because they've already been involved in the situation. The, the, the policy kind of talks about the progression of, 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 of the way complaints about personnel goes and the fact that the board is, is the uh, uh, a final arbiter of, uh, over the superintendent's decision. And, it, you know, uh, part of that therefore is as board members, we have to stay neutral because Obviously, if we've already weighed in um, into the in, into the complaint earlier, we can't we can't obviously be an impartial uh, judge if we get to the appeal to the board level. Um, in other, in other we words, we should from the VPSB, uh, a, a, a language that, that we've modified. Okay. Uh, uh, you and, and the next policy B B thirty four records retention. This is really a boilerplate policy that just basically says that we're going to follow the laws. About retaining about what what we need to keep and how long we need to keep it. Um, uh, it's it came out because they modified I think some of the uh, uh, schedule of public record, so we had to mod everyone had to modify their policy. So this is really this is really a very boilerplate uh, uh, pass and 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 uh, move on uh, legislation the net or a uh, uh, policy rather. Next we have D one, which is proficiency based graduation. This policy has been slightly edited. Um, we had passed this policy in 2018. 
Um, if you scroll down to the bottom, you can see that the policy committee has just edited the language a little bit. Um, so again, this is not this is not a substantive change. This is just blessing some edits. Can you um, the disposition can you point out? Carl, Carl, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Can you just uh, can you sort of give us an overview of what the changes were in this? Do you remember? Um, <laughs> or maybe not. No, that's fine. To reopen it, I think. Um, uh, I think the the uh, the um, using it, it's, it's discussing the alternative pathways as an option, and uh, the, the 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 some of Jamie's language around uh, uh, expanding that proficiency takes place uh, can 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 take place in, in attitude in um, activities that aren't direct that aren't direct classrooms. So someone, for example, um, could demonstrate some proficiencies around. Um, if, for example, they did uh, uh, extracurricular skiing, or they they had uh, um, they, they they participated in in, in uh, some sort of uh, equine program or whatever, um, we've expanded. I believe the language was expanded to allow um, you know the, the the phrase at the bottom of the third from the last paragraph, where it says mm -hmm. um, about uh, um, uh, uh, proficiency learning that takes place outside the school school day or classroom. Yeah. Um, and, you know, provided the proficiency achieved is, is it occurs under supervision. So I think it allows, I, I think what part of what the changes were, were to allow a broader, broader access to, to achieving a, a proficiency, going back more to a, a personalized learning plan kind of education model. Does that uh, jibe with uh, 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 what you think? Yep. Lindy is nodding her head. Yes. So I remembered properly. <laughs> Good work. Yeah, it's also called flexible pathways or community-based learning. Those are all interchangeable terms that are used as a way to meet the requirements that don't necessarily mean that a kiddo needs to sit um, in front of a teacher all day long to prove their learning, that they can go out into the community and learn it other ways. I've seen some pretty cool uh, ways for that to happen, especially at the high school level. But as kids start to get to that end of elementary, middle school level, there's those opportunities as well. Thank you. Um, so we, we have a, a policy F28, which is about uh, a disposition of assets. Um, and this is, uh, uh, it talks about um, how to get rid of things, um, uh, how to, you know, that, that are, are, you know, the, the effort is to restore uh, maximum value from, uh, uh, you know, the disposition of assets defines uh, what um, no remaining no remaining value means in terms of uh, uh, disposing of things as well as uh, the differences in things that we need to dispose of uh, that was purchased with federal funds. So again, pretty much of a bookkeeping uh, keep Tara keep Tara honest on her and on her toes kind of policy. Um, which the next policy is the same thing. Uh, it's a, uh, a, a investment policy um, to uh, govern how the, the the school member district funds are invested. Um, basically, uh, the, it's a fairly simple and clean policy and it's, it's, you know, we, we invest things that ensure pre uh, preservation of the principle. Um, we, we, uh, reasonably diversify so that we're, uh, not taking, uh, any kind of unreasonable, uh, uh, risks with being just all in one sector, deciding that we're just going to buy, um, you know, uh, just buy bonds or, or just buy, uh, a certificate of deposit, um, and then trying to achieve the uh, highest rate of return possible for our taxpayers. Um, the last policy is uh, a policy that uh, does have some a little more meat than the last two policies. It's about budgeting. Um, the key part, uh, I think, that we need to be looking at is, so the superintendent, it talks first about how the superintendent develops our calendar, and we're going to have um, you know, a, a regular, you'll get preliminary notes on this date, you'll get the, this kind of information on this date um, uh, to, to really kind of formalize the, the, the budget building calendar. And, but the important part for the board is that, and I think we pretty much uh, hit this on uh, with, with, especially with the book, it, book that you put together for us last year, Ethan, mm -hmm. the nine points on the presentation, these cover the things that the, that, uh, uh, the budget uh, presentation needs needs to uh, go over. Um, the one thing I thought that we hadn't 
really, I mean, we, in, in my, it might have been a, uh, something that I didn't really emphasize in my management letter last year, but the uh, point number three about emphasizing cost savings taken by the board, um, that's not been something we've really, really, uh, 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 you know, pounded into or, or really discussed enough. Um, we do talk about budget priorities linked to student achievement, and we do talk about um, you know, our, our prior year performance in terms of uh, student, student uh, achievement and performance. Um, but this is the one that I think that really the board, um, if, if we think that there's a, uh, a bullet item uh, or something else that needs to be added to an additional point to this, if uh, there's something else that we think a budget, uh, a budget presentation to cover, to be uh, an effective tool to communicate to our communities. This is where, if we think that there's something that's that's missing in here, we need to pass that up to the budget committee and and uh, get get that uh, change made so that rather than us passing the RSUD version that our, has our bullet point ten, um, hopefully the policy committee would instead look at our bullet point ten and say, "Yep, that's a good idea. Let's add that uh, uh, to everyone else's policies as well." Mm -hmm. Do you have anything off the top of your head on that? Um, I think this is I, I, I think this is, is 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 pretty good. The only piece that you know, and, and I would think we would want to do it for ourselves, but I don't think should necessarily be in the policy. Is one of the things that we've done is is uh, in the past as we've talked about um, cost of of tuitioning all students versus cost of operating school. Um, you know, perhaps perhaps maintaining and, and putting that calculation uh into in, in into the booklet um would be helpful i think that uh is that you know, in there is that in there right now as a recommendation uh it is not it is not in the in the in the in the in the policy recommendations but i don't think it applies necessarily to to all the schools i think it's something that we would want to maintain and just i mean we can put in other things ourselves we don't have to but these are the these are the points that really have to be in there like i really think that pie chart you did of breaking down um where our budget funds went in terms of how much went to personnel how much went to tuition how much went to the su you know that's not a required uh um that's not a required uh part of the the budget presentation but i think we should still keep doing that because i think that was a really clear and clean graphic that lets us know where all those tax dollars uh, uh go go to yes uh carl where do we go to find these policies um, they are on the wrvsu.org uh, site under the school board tab under there's two policy uh, menu items. One is warned policies and, and the other is adopted policies. These are all okay. in the warned policy category. Thank you. Any other questions? Any other questions for Carl or comments, Jenny? No, I think Amy's was the only one that I was thinking of. Okay, Justine. Justine, are you still there? Yep. No, no questions. Okay. Good. Cool. And Amy, was I under time or did I ramble on? No, you did a good job. No, you did good. We're at, at 14. I was just over on that website though, and I don't see under warned policies um uh like this this budgeting one. What it was F30? Oh, yeah. there it is. It's, it says copy of. Never mind. It, it it said copy of. There's another word right, in there. Yeah, there, there. There's not a consisting naming structure to them. Okay, um, that's why I, I was searching and it didn't find it didn't find what I was searching yeah. for. So I got it now. Thank you. No worries. Could you just could you just repeat the link so that others can find that too if they're curious? Sure, it's wrvsu.org. It's our SU website. Uh, at the top, there's a uh, uh, a uh, staff tab, or uh, I'm sorry, a school boards tab. And under, uh, when you pull down about the fifth or sixth items is. Uh, right below master agreements is warned policies and adopted policies. Hmm. And these are all under the warned policies because they have not yet been adopted. And you will need a Google, some sort of Google read to be able to do this. Correct. You, they're, they're, they're Google box. Um, is the policy committee essentially done with these and just waiting for public comment and then they'll be come back to us in December and we will yes. approve them all. Okay. Okay, so barring, unless of course some some other board comes back with significant changes, then we would have to review them again and it'd be pushed out to January, is that correct? Correct. Okay, good. 
Correct. Or what would happen is, uh, what's happened in the past is, uh, like Sharon Elementary adopts their version, we adopt our version, the rest of the SU adopts the generic version, and then the policy committee gets back together and tries to uh, and tries to to, to 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 resolve the differences and fold them together. Usually, the differences are resolved by our language getting added. Like the last one I can think of was was that it was we had one version, Sharon Elementary had a different version, and the rest of the SU had a third version. We added our language and Sharon Elementary's language, and then everyone adopted that policy that, that, that covered all the bases. Oh, good. Good, I think we're, I think we've covered this. Thank you, Carl. All right, we're into um, section seven discussion items. Uh, the budget, second draft, 21-22 budget, second draft. Okay, so since this is a new way of, of of doing this, walk us through it, please. Ray, can you put it up on the screen? I emailed it to you around 5.15-ish. Yeah, I'm just pulling it up too. Thank you. So I'm gonna just start off at the top and then I'm gonna turn it over to Bonnie and Lindy. So, I made one adjustment to the student support budget that we reviewed at the last board meeting. And that was, uh, we had a common movement filed for the guidance counselor. So I've just added that into the increase under that section. And could you just explain to me what the student support is versus the general education? Student support is the positions in your school that are in support of your students. So it's your principals, your admin, admin administrative assistants, intervention, guidance, nurses, your regular ed paraeducators, and your substitutes. And then your general education, as you'll see on the chart as we go down it, it's regular education. So that's your core teachers, your K1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 teachers. Then it's your music, art, PE, library, media. So that's the Thanks. breakdown between the two student support and general education sections. Thank you. You bet. So I think the big thing to note is we're really keeping our staffing under the general education line items the same. We don't anticipate any changes, especially since we started, you know, there's several shared positions this year, including our school counselor, our uh, music teacher, our art teacher are all shared across our two campuses, uh, which is part of the reason you see some of those savings. It's also because it's split out, and Tara, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but this is what we've talked about this afternoon. Um, it's also because it's split out a little differently, that difference of down almost five almost 6% is really because some of those people are pulled out and now put in that student services um, or student support category. Normally interventionists were in that regular education line item. So that's part of the reason you see a little bit of a difference there. Yeah, that is your primary driver on that change. When we went over the staff list, it was just breaking them out into different categories in this budgeting process. And what, why is that done this time and not before? Because your interventionists are considered general regular ed elementary educators. So when we report that information to the agency of education, it's all reported under the same function code. So when you look at your reports, even, that would be function code 1100. And that's the general elementary general education function code. So because we were supporting it out between or separating it out between support and regular education, it just, I had to break the people out differently. So then so how, do it. So how come the student support doesn't increase by more than? Um, how come it doesn't increase by more than the 2.86? Well, I would have, if, if the general education, if most of the decrease it's because you're moving some people to a different place. It seems like you're moving them to student support, but that student support is going up by only 2.86%. A lot of that is also um, health insurance where you had some people budgeted that they were going to be enrolled in a certain plan. And then when enrollment actually ha happened, they weren't. 
So some of those savings that we realized in the earlier drafts had a lot to do with health enrollment. And at least one of the positions is a less veteran, uh, less veteran person in the position than was there uh, two years ago. Carl, I keep seeing your hand pop up. You have a question. <laughs> I do. Um, do these numbers do these numbers reflect the uh, uh, teacher contract settlement, the three point six, whatever it is, that uh, uh, our costs went up? It represents an increase, Carl. But your contracts in that negotiation are not ratified. Okay. Um, so we get? Yeah. We. I, I'm not sure. We don't. It, so we're going to i guess i'm confused as to why that's so can you explain the logic for that behind me or explain you the logic built in an increase carl yes so i think the point is carl until it's ratified and this is why it's a draft like once it's ratified we'll be able to go and put in the actual increase um and right now it's just a average right tara of an correct increase. It's not that official. We are using a placeholder but, as a whole rather than increasing each individual salary for the negotiated agreement once it's ratified. What's the percentage increase placeholder that you put in? It's usually been 3%, but I don't want to speak for Tara. It's really a lot. That's a, about the ballpark, yes. Okay. Sorry, I didn't hear the number. Three percent. Yeah, three percent is three percent. So, so a point five percent increase in salary. Um, is that goes toward the? Uh, sorry, seven forty five, seven forty five thousand. 719. I'm just help me help me to figure out what I want to apply point five to. So that we get some accurate idea of what. Yep. Um, if you're doing placeholders, why not estimate with a little higher placeholder so we get a more accurate idea? Because it's just a draft and we have time and it's like the average what we practiced under um, in past. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the positions that that goes up and Tara stop me if I'm talking too much and you have the right answer and I'm putting out wrong information. But those interventionist positions, guidance, so any currently what we're waiting to be ratified is um, the master agreement for professionals. Mm -hmm. right? so that doesn't include our support staff. What that does include is our regular, our general classroom teachers, which is that regular education line item, our music teacher, our art teacher, PE, library and media specialist, our school counselor or guidance nurse follows under that as well as interventionist. So, so am I right that, I mean, is it as simple as looking at the 745,719 and multiplying that by 0.5 or is that way, way too simple? I'm going to defer the question. That is not how the formula works. I'm sure. Ethan. I'm sure it's way, way more complicated than that. Yeah, yeah. I, I was going to say, be careful about, about that, Ethan. Yeah, but no, no, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'd just like to be able to look at it um, and, and have our voters be able to look at a, you know, because so the, the point five, it's a significant amount of money. Um, yep. and, I, and I think we need to, we need to be looking at a budget, especially if we're looking at a placeholder draft. I think we need to be looking at a budget that has that, uh, you know, at least ballpark, closer, closer number. Well, does the, 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 um, the proposed amount, um, doesn't that already have the 3% uh, increase in it? What is the 3%? And your, and the budget the numbers budget? that I used for salaries has an increased percentage based on projections built in. It also changes FTEs for positions that we have discussed may potentially change. So it is not as easy as saying, Joe right. makes X, I increased his salary by Y, you now get C. Right. Yep. right. Okay. 
And also in that same line item is all the benefits too. So like what you're seeing is salary benefit benefits. So that's health insurance, that's FICA, that's retirement. That's, that's quite a few things. Is, then I guess the question is, is there some way um, without going through the laborious process of, you know, figuring out for each contract and each, each employee, is there some way to get a sense of what that 0.5 could mean for our budget? while we're in the draft stage. I think that when we get to the next section of budgeting where you see the full budget, it'll be very similar to what you've seen in the past. This okay. is what the increase is under this line item. Okay, so but for we, what I, the purpose of it is today and what we're discussing in the drafts, yep. that kind of detail we are not releasing at this point in the budgeting process. Okay, good. Thank you. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. That clarifies. I think the other thing, Ethan, that'll bring focus to the budget is when the con once the con contract is actually ratified by everyone, then uh, then Kara can go to work with real numbers. Mm -hmm. right, right, and I have to do two years of salary changes because the contract it's this current fiscal year plus next fiscal year. Gotcha. So every person will have to be looked at individually. Once the contract is ratified and the new salary schedule is released and agreed upon by the union and the supervisory union. Mm -hmm. Um, I, Go Carl. I think that I, I think that it's important in the main that you know, we have we have an agreement in place that that you know we have there there is no restriction on communicating the 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 the, the overall raise amount that's been agreed to. And I think that, you know, knowing that, you know, I, and yeah, I, I agree, we don't, we can, we can imply more of a, of, of a, of a general broad strokes to, to, to this, but as you pointed out, we budgeted, uh, we budgeted a 3% increase for the current year we're in. So we are going to be 0.6% in deficit thereabouts, because some of our teachers may be, you know, if they're off step or, or, or some of the details of the contract may, may affect that differently, but we, we, we agreed to pay more this year in salary than we budgeted for this year. And I think it's really important that next year's budget doesn't make that, that we, we don't go forward with those, those, those same kinds of, 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 of um, suppositions because we have, you know, we have as, as, as a, a, a negotiating committee, voted for a particular raise and as a matter of fact i am legally bound as the person that that the board member that's on that negotiating committee to to represent that that uh, negotiation in good faith i can't i can't i cannot uh, unless uh, the labor board and i want to have some conversations i cannot say oh well let's you know it, it's even though we said it's 3.6 it's really we, we we can still work with three i i think we need to be transparent and we need to be putting in you know the uh, information that 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 reflects the the agreement that the SU negotiating committee came to and voted on and approved with the negotiation negotiation committee of the NEA the NEA team. Yeah, no, Carl, I don't. I completely agree with what you're saying, and that'll absolutely be the next steps we take. It's just for the purposes of this draft, with it not being ratified, you operate on that three percent. It's also why our spending, in general, one of the many reasons, has been extremely tight this year to make sure things like that are accounted for when we had to build a budget when we didn't know what the increase was going to be in salaries. So I think we all hear what you're saying. We just need the formal step of it being ratified to so build the accurately um, so we're prepared. And yes, Carl, I'm well aware of what needs to happen. And when I have a finalized salary schedule, that will happen. <clears throat> so then just let me, let me, play the fool here because uh, you know these these numbers all you know are, are tricky for me what what should we be taking away from this draft budget here aside from the shift of where interventionists were I believe I mean what else should we be taking in that is useful to us as far as what we're going forward? how we're going to staff our buildings uh -huh. our campuses next year our current proposal with this budget that this draft I'm going to say draft I'm not going to say budget I'm going to say draft yeah in mm -hmm. front of you is 
to stay the same at this time, with the exception of we talked how we were going to shift interventions, interventionist last meeting, mm -hmm. to make sure that that also covers math as well as literacy. Got you. Help close that gap. So um, we're really looking for the feedback that, and correct me, Bonnie and Tara, if I'm wrong, the feedback that shows that we plan on keeping our staffing pretty much the same. Um, Bonnie and I had one idea around the music position and the idea she has an outdoor ed degree as well. So tapping into that resource, especially if COVID-19 restrictions don't change when we come to school next year and you can't necessarily have band and uh, chorus, but instead we could use that resource and build up that program within our schools, our campuses as well. But just trying to get creative within the talents we have within our buildings. Great. So status, essentially status quo. Yeah. Correct. And, and this would be this would be one other takeaway I would suggest. And I I, I know it's not going to be perhaps what folks want to hear, but we're just a tad early because so much of what goes into this budget is salary and benefits. You know it. So we're just a tad early of being able to have any big takeaways that are numerical. Certainly, what Lindy said is an important one. We're looking at pretty much status quo in the staffing. But in terms of being able to say anything, um, we just need a little bit more time so that we're working with real numbers around what is the bulk of our budget, which is salary and benefits. Got you. Okay, so no, that, that's what someone like me who's really looking at this um, needs is, you know, uh, is like a good question and then I'll answer yeah. saying, yes, good, <laughs> I hear that. So Ethan, another um, thing that's important to, to focus on is we also have an open enrollment period that's happening right now. So staff has the opportunity to change their benefits effective January 1. So for that prime example where I said we budgeted for someone to be potentially on a family plan and when enrollment actually happened, perhaps they only wanted a single plan or an employee plus spouse plan. So that is also one of the next factors that we'll take into account when we're building the next draft series of budgets is what was actual enrollment effective in January that will impact your budget for next year. So the way to think of this is sort of like a narrowing of the, you know, we go from broad strokes and we get a little more. But this time we're going from the, the basic up. Yeah. So we didn't take your budget that you had last year and just increased it. Jamie's way of budgeting when he came to our supervisory union was we are starting from ground zero and we are building the budgets from that point. So that's why you're seeing this in the student support section and then you're seeing it in the general education section because the charge that was given to all building administrators throughout the supervisory union, including my office and including special education was you need to establish what you need for staffing and then we build the budget from there rather than doing it from we had a four million dollar budget this year we're just going to increase it two percent so we literally went to ground zero and are building up from that point so everybody knows what's in the budget we're making sure we have the necessities to run the programs that we need to provide students with the best educational opportunities that they can get and be fiscally responsible to our communities. Oh, this is good, thank you. I, I know we have, I remember hearing that before several times. Uh, it's just whenever I look at these numbers so I don't sort of glaze over, it's good to hear that again. Just the reminder of how we're working this and how it's different so that, and, and, and that just, it just helps those of us who are not the numbers people um, figure out what, what we're doing at this stage. And I, I think the other thing, Ethan, in terms of communication is people always need to feel comfortable asking us questions. We work with this draft so many times that, you know, we sort of know it somewhat inside out. And then we assume that everyone else has that same level of understanding. And that's just not the case. So I, I would always encourage people to ask questions around the budget. It gives us an opportunity to better explain it and better articulate what it is we're trying to accomplish. Because the budget really is is just a it's really a philosophy statement it's this is what we value in our schools that's why you're seeing these items in our budget it um, makes me, it makes me realize and i appreciate this lindy or, or and, and bonnie talking about the music position 
Um, I would really like a policy statement from this board about outdoor ed that you can then implement because I think it's hugely important to us. And certainly I've been talking a lot about it with, with um, staff, some of the staff and also people in the communities. But I, I think at the next meeting, I would like to put that on our agenda that we, we really make a statement about how important that is to us and what we wanted to go forward with that. Yeah, I've heard budgets described as the implementation of your policy. Yep. yep. You can have all the policies you want, but if you don't then take it to the budget stage, then you have you have no tools with which to implement what you're saying you value. Good. Great. Are there any other um yes, uh, Lydia yes here. Or Amy, yep. I I just had one takeaway from the VSBA um budgeting uh, webinar I went to that I kind of wanted to convey to to tear well to everybody i guess um and one of their big things was that um this year there's a bunch of covid related costs that are um that were not budgeted for um that are um able to we we're able to use um cares funds and other grants and other monies for but there's it's uncertain going into the budget season that we're in right now for FY22, if there's going to be any funds for these extra additional COVID expenses, which we know we are probably going to have. Um, and uh, one thing that was stated is that uh, maybe we should be talking to our legislators um, about uh, making COVID related costs exempt from the threshold the excess spending threshold and um, that I, they said that that can really be done easily in the business office because they're doing that anyway, separating out COVID costs versus regular budgeted uh, expenses. Um, so I wanted to put that out to people that that could be, might be a beneficial thing for us to do is to stop, talk to our legislators about that because these are going to be ongoing costs that, that we are, you know, there are, are um, so, thank you. Good, thank you. I have one um, question back. I think it was Bonnie that was talking about the, the math interventionalist um, in the spreadsheet. It says that will, it looks like that's something that will be provided by the SU. It says the SU will include a 1.0 math interventionist. Um, how much of that 1.0 would, is that, I'm assuming that's not just for us. What portion of, um, of our school district would that FTE equate to? That is our goal, Jenny, is that if we get our title funds as anticipated as we're working through these budgets is for the supervisory union to attempt to get a 1.0 math interventionist covered for Rochester Stockbridge through title funds. Okay, thank you. That would be great. Good. Further, further comments? Justine, do you have any questions? No questions right now. Okay. All right. In that case, we will move on to 7.2, board statement of the current sale of the high school building. Um, this is a, well, let's just go ahead. I'm just going to go ahead the way I, I sort of planned this. Um, uh, we have sort of two statements that I feel we have to do in, in order to make, to get everything done right here. Um, I feel before we release an information, we have, we have a lot of information that we're going to release to the public um, and we need to vote on it because it's all been can, um, discussed in executive session. So we need to approve that. But I think taking Keith's lead um, in our last meeting that we have not made a statement of intent about what we want to do with the high school building, I feel it's important to, to do that first. Um, to talk about the statement first um, that Keith has written and we can you know, revise it as is needed um, because the, dis the information that is released includes that same statement. And I think we need to make the statement formally before we release um, all the information that has that statement. Um, so let's get, uh, Ray, if you could put um, the statement up from, uh, um, from Keith. Ethan, uh, my apologies. Yeah. This is the shorter of the two. 
Let me see. Um, it's the one in quotes, in bold yep. and quotes. Yep. Yep. Yes. Yes. The shorter of the two things I sent you. Yes. Thank you. Um, and I'll read it through. And I think the best way to do this is to move it and discuss it, and then we can amend it. Uh, this is very small for me to read. Oh, let me see what I can do here. Uh, the school board for the RSUD has made the decision to offer the former Rochester High School building to the town of Rochester Select Board as outlined under the articles in the merger document. We will request the Rochester Select Board respond within 90 days from the receipt of this offer as to their intent to purchase the building and property should they decline to enter into this contact within contract within 90 days timeline, the board will then proceed with offer of the sale of property to a potential third party in accordance with the merger document and the guidelines of the Vermont BOE. Uh, is that DOE? Bureau of Education. During this process, we will undertake the necessary steps to prepare the property for potential sale, avoiding any additional delays. This decision has not come easily. The board has clearly heard from the commu both communities. We realize that if this merger is going to succeed, this is a mandatory first step in realizing our goals. Having made this decision, the board has authorized funds to be allocated to further this process. We'll also be instructing our attorneys to proceed with preparing the required documents under our direction to move this process forward as outlined above. We appreciate your patience and hope you realize that the board has heard your voice and is willing to act on your wishes. I would entertain a motion to move this statement to be accepted by the board. I, I would like to know where the 90 days came from. Uh, that was his idea. It was something he mentioned at the last meeting. Um, uh, no, actually, but do, I can't we, do we know that before we approve this, I think we need to know whether that's something that's reasonable. Okay, well, we can also, um, we can have the statement, we can approve what part of the statement we can be. I mean, it sounds reasonable to me, um, but I think we need to move it before we discuss it. To do this I, I did say uh, that I moved the, that I moved the uh, uh, argument. Article. Moved the argument. So we have a second on this statement. I'll second. Okay, uh, Jan Justine, okay. Good, so now we're open for discussion and can rework it as needed be. Um, uh, uh, I read the 90 days, I thought it sounded pretty reasonable uh, to me. Um, the, uh, uh, I mean, it seems, it, it seems a little long to me. I didn't know if we could trim it down to a little bit more boilerplate, but I thought for me, the, the really uh, salient points were the 90 days that it makes our intention clear. It's basically covering steps to we some steps that we have already taken um and it's just making them public that we are doing this which is what keith was bringing to us that we had not said before um other discussion uh let, let me go around and just see um uh jenny why don't we start with you because you had a, a quick reaction to it yeah i guess that's just the biggest thing i mean has it um i mean to me it sounds reasonable but i don't know um you know i think it seems like there should be, instead of just calling out a random number, that we need to have some sort of timeline. This takes X weeks, and then this can get done. Um, mm -hmm. Just, I mean, to me, it seems reasonable, but I, I don't know um, well, let's ask, uh, whether, David, whether it is or not. David, does that sound like a reasonable expectation within 90 days that we could have some of our subdivision questions answered and uh, be in a position to get a yes or no? I don't know. Okay. Uh, it, it's possible, but uh, I, again, the question is what is the property going to be that they are purchasing? And that's while we're close to having an initial discussion on that point, uh, we're not quite there yet. So the question is, if we want to go forward with um, uh, a 90 days um, <coughs> statement, or if we want to make an amendment to remove that part so that it's basically covering our intent. I would like to make a, a, a 
um, whatever you would do to remove the amendment. Yes, amendment. I'd like to make an amendment to remove the 90 days uh, and to, for it to read that the um, school board of, for the RSUD has made the decision to offer the former Rochester High School building to the town of Rochester select board as outlined under the articles agreement in the merger document and end it there for that first paragraph. Okay, so and uh, so we will cut out the third party and also the timeline. Do we um, do we want to put anything in there? Um, well, I guess we have to amendments on the floor, so we need to um, uh, second it, second the amendment, and then move forward, and so we can discuss the amendment. Can I, I have a second? second I second the agreement or the amendment because I don't. I think that we can't just. Good. Well, I, a number yeah, that so we don't know where it came from. Yep. Now that we now we can now we can uh, now we can discuss and then we'll vote on that amendment. So, uh, any further discussion on removing 90 days and the third party lines of the first paragraph of this agreement? Um, I have Carl. I have some some thoughts yep. on that. Um, <clears throat> I. I'm not, you know, 90 days just sounds like 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 a pretty boilerplate number. The the important thing from my point of view is that what we where a number would come from, whether it's 90, whether it's 120, whether it's 60, would be from an understanding of should the should the select board um, in whatever that finite timeline is choose not to uh, choose not to purchase the building. We, we as a board have time to turn around and dispose of that building without having it uh, uh, appear as a, as a uh, budgetary line item in the 21-22 uh, uh, budget. So, you know, to my mind- so having, Is that approval of the amendment? Excuse me? It's, uh, it sounds like you're approving of the amendment, that it's better for us- I am, I, am, I am not approving of the idea of removing a number of removing a date certain. I think a oh, date okay. certain is important to trigger the board's next steps. What I'm what I'm interested in in understanding, and I don't know if uh, this is something that uh, Tara can answer or that um, we can you know we can uh, uh, put in language that says we will determine a deadline. But to my mind, the key idea of about 90 days or 60 days or 120 days is that. Whatever that window is, we have time, should the town of Rochester choose to refuse the building, we have time to dispose of the building without, you know, and have it off our balance sheet for the 21-22 school year. Mm -hmm. So I am not generally in favor of just making it vague and removing any sort of any sort of deadline. What I'd like us to do is determine a deadline and either putting language that says, uh, if we can't determine that deadline tonight, language in the, into the agreement that says uh, that we will advise you know, we will advise the deadline um, by December 1st or, or whatever, some sort of language like that to allow us to, 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 to put the deadline in once we know what it is. But I think the key thing about a deadline is that we have a deadline to get rid of the building so that regardless of whether the town takes it or we sell it to a, a nursing home or someone else, um, it's not on our books in the 21-22 school year. Think, thinking about this again, so it says 90 days from the receipt of this offer. Um, so I think the point that we're that we are offering it to the point that the town accepts it, I think is fine. But I think um, I think kind of a bigger question is when are we offering this up? When is our offer? Sorry, say that last part again, Jenny. I couldn't quite. What so the the, te the text says within 90 days from the receipt of this offer. Mm -hmm. um, so I think from the time that we give the offer to the town and 90 days of them accepting it, I think that's fine. I think the bigger question is um, kind of the starting point of that 90 days is us offering this to the town. And I think that's a whole nother question. Well, when I are we think, offering this to the town? Well, I think that's why uh, Keith you know, asked for this is that we had not actually made this statement that we're doing this and maybe that's what we want to come out of with tonight is just a a simple statement of intent and maybe without that many details um just to get that done so that we know we're we're going ahead with that and then we come up with a de a, a deadline later but as i say the amendment on the floor currently is to remove 
30 days with no nothing substituted yet and to remove the third party. So I guess rethinking it, I guess I'm um, kind of changing my mind here in terms of I think it's okay, okay. to include a day since that timeline starts of the receipt of the off of the which offer. would be which would be I, I as far as I'm concerned, and maybe David could um, uh, chime in here, but it sounds like when we approve this this article. But just approving this article, that doesn't mean that tomorrow we're going to bring it to the town, right? Yeah, I, I'm okay with a deadline from the date we make an offer to the town, but we're not at a point where we're ready to make that offer yet. Then I would think we would wait until we are ready to make an offer and know what the time frame, a realistic time frame would be to complete an offer. But we yeah. have made, I, I mean, I believe we have made, we need to state that we've made the decision. Well, we're talking about the amendment. So it's really if the discussion right now is all about whether we remove the 90 days and the, and the third party. I don't see any, nobody seems to have a problem with removing the third party. It's really about the 90 days. Yeah, I don't think we, we're at the point that we can we can put that type of uh, language into a document on um, with so many unknowns where, where we are in our uh, process of figuring out boundary lines and, and, and wastewater permits and, and all that. I just don't feel that we are at the point that we can put a time frame on it. Okay. Uh, um... I, I think we might, uh, Justine, I just want to get, do you have any input on this? Make yeah, sure. I was just wondering if the language could be um, adjusted as such that the 90 day framework is in there, but it includes that the board will revisit it at a certain point if the offer has not been accepted by this many days. Just to um, put a time frame in there, I do know the public, there's been public concern about del you know, whether it's being delayed and how efficient the process is going, how long it's taking. I think it's important to keep a, a timeline in there if we're making this statement, but maybe we can include something else that allows us to make an addendum to this statement or revisit it or something, add that language in. Well, we certainly have gotten, I mean, Jenny's now talking that she's <coughs> of, of some time. Um, um, Justine seems to be in favor of some time. <coughs> But we have, we just need to know yes or no to this amendment to remove those two items. We can come back and add other things in. This is a process. We can, you know, we can change this as we need to. That's how we, that's why I like to work on the document as we're discussing it. So the intent of this document is just for public. This isn't to bring to the select board, is that correct? Well, that's a good question. I mean, what is the intent of this document? We, we have not said publicly that we are, we intend to do this, that we are moving forward. We have actually taken quite a few actions as we'll see from releasing this next document to do this. But I think it's, it's making a clear statement that this is what we're doing so that nobody has any question about that. And removing these items, these two, the 90 days and the third party, you know, gets it down to a basic statement of intent. And maybe that is enough for now and we can revisit this at our next meeting. Um, I think that, that, would, be... that would be a pro vote against, you know, to uh, accept the amendment as, as suggested by Amy. I think that seems reasonable. It just puts a uh, statement out there and we can come back to something like this. Uh, we can revisit this in, at our next meeting or um, as we move forward with where we are in the process. And I think the next document will kind of show and give us a little bit more indication of where we are in the process and if it is something that's feasible within 90 days. Okay. I, I, I think we're ready to vote on the amendment as any, unless there's further discussion. Are we planning to release a document, a second document in the near future? And if so, Yes, that's um, the next thing we're I mean, talking about. What do you think the timeline would be? I mean, if we're going to be releasing something today and then releasing something else in two days, you know, should we well, condense I, it to one? I understood that the document we're releasing, the next document we're going to vote on, would be released tonight. 
and be part of our discussion tonight. So why do we need two? Yes, yeah, so maybe um, we just need to hold off on this. I'm, I'm saying that I, I, the way I looked at it was that we needed this statement because the next document includes this statement, which we haven't, we've just voting to release it from executive session, information from executive session. We're not making the statement. This is making the statement. And that's why maybe the simpler, the better. Is that clear, Jenny? I think so. I mean, I had comments on the second document, which I'm not sure if they've been addressed, so I'm not sure. Um, I'm fine with releasing two then. All right, so Ray's given it to us. Um, I, I'd say let's, let's, let's try a vote on this, on this amendment to remove these two lines and see how we go. And I'll call you out one at a time just to make sure we're clear. Uh, Carl, yes or no to the amendment? To take no. out a no. Okay. Amy, yes or no to the amendment? Yes. Jenny, yes or no to the amendment? I'm changing from yes back to no because of where the timeline starts. Okay. Justine, yes or no to the amendment? I'm changing from no to yes. I think that it's uh, best to be simple at first, as long as we make sure to revisit the timeline as soon as possible. All right. Um, I'm going to say yes to the amendment to keep this simple. So that makes it three to three to two. Um, we're going to uh, accept the amendment as as suggested. So it now reads the school board for the Rochester Stockbridge Unified District made the decision to offer the former Rochester High School building to the town of Rochester Select Board as outlined under the articles of the merger document. We we'll request the Rochester Select Board respond. Ray, can you scroll down? No. Yeah. Um, we request. Yeah. Oh, no, that's gone now. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, during this process, we undertake necessary steps to prepare the property potential sale, avoiding any additional delays. This decision has not come easily. Board has clearly heard from both communities, and we realize this merger is, if this merger is going to secede, this is a mandatory first step in realizing our goals. Having made uh, having made this decision, the board will authorize, have authorized funds to be allocated further this process. We'll also be instructing our attorneys to proceed with preparing the required documents under our direction to move this process forward as outlined above. We appreciate your patience and hope you realize that the board has heard your voice and is willing to act on your wishes. So now we're in, back in discussion of this document and then a yes or no vote on this document. Is there any further discussion? On the I guess I'd like to make another amendment. You could. Absolutely. Okay, I guess I'd like to. Um, it, it, this decision is not. Whoa, stop moving, please. Thank you. This uh, decision, I'd like to take that entire paragraph out that this is a mandatory step um, to continue the, su uh, the success of our merger. I think that boils back down to my uh, comment in. Uh, board comment of um, we can assume that that might be one of the reasons, but we really don't know. Um, and I don't think that we should Good. put don't it discuss out it there. Yet. Um, we've oh, got sorry. an amendment on the floor, um, as it could be seconded. Can I go? Okay, I, I make a motion to, to uh, an amendment to remove uh, the, this paragraph uh, discussing the uh, um, merger Just and the mandatory first step. Starting with this decision. Is there a yeah. second? I second. Justine seconds. Is there any discussion? Um, yeah, I'm. So we've 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 taken out a deadline. So we've taken out any 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 kind of action steps that are that are part of this document. So, no. well, no, we 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 we're 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 not we're we're just saying we're 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 offering the building. Yes, that we're is an not, action. No, we're not we're not making a a hard action action statement. Um, you may feel that it's, it's a stronger action statement than I feel, um, but it, it's, it feels like we're kind of making it more into a political and a position statement. And I feel that, um, you know, the, the, it, the decision has not come, e come, come easily and we have clearly heard, heard from, from communities. Um, you know, certainly the, 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 the word mandatory uh, could, be, could be called into question um, or mandatory first step um, but I, I think that I, I, I think that we you know 
if, if we're saying that this is going to be not a not not so much of an action item, more of a political statement, I think keeping some of those some of that political language in there, I think that we have clearly heard from both communities, and I think that that taking that out makes the makes the document more wishy washy. Good, um, Jenny, okay. comment on this amendment. Yeah, I agree with Carl, and I agree with um, you know the mandatory. I think that's something that could be taken out. Okay, well, I right can now, right now we're just we have to deal with what we're on the table, and the table is would I amend my uh, <laughs> amend the amendment, amend sure. my amendment um, to uh, keep in that the this decision is not come easy, and the board has clearly heard from both communities, but just to remove the um, uh, mandatory first steps um, as uh, and I'm not sure how I you would rewrite that sentence. Um, but but I do understand um, where Carl and Jenny are coming could, from. And how about we say we realize that if this merger is to succeed, um, this is a step in realizing our goals. I would support that because that's the amendment yes. to the amendment. So that we'll yeah we're, we're getting a little complicated, and we probably don't have to be quite this um, um, at, you know. Um, I'm being very town meeting moderator about this amendment, and I know that we have a little looser rules here. Um, so let's let's accept that this amendment is to change this paragraph to say, read this. This decision has not come easily. The board has clearly heard from both communities, and we realize that if this merger is going to succeed, this is an important step in realizing our goals. Yes. Is an, an, in an important step. Thank you, Ray. Good. Okay. Um, let's let's get this put in. Um, I think we're ready to vote on this. All in you, you favor. Can, oh yeah, Jenny. I, you have, sorry. No, I want to go for it. Was that can Jenny? I just say one thing? Uh, Bonnie. Yes. If you just look at your second paragraph, I'm not so sure that it that it makes sense right now, given what you've taken out of the first. It says during this process. I don't think we've mentioned the process. I don't know if that's important, but as I'm reading it, it, it suddenly. Well, look. Yeah, Ray, will you go up take. to the top, please? Yeah, he's there. I think you can just start with, we will undertake the necessary steps to prepare the property for a potential sale, avoiding any additional delays. Okay. I'm just saying. Let's just make that. I agree. I'm, I'm being really stickler here, and I think we can just make these changes. Yeah, I would just say, yeah, so, there we go. Right. I think it reads better. Yep. Good. Thank you. Isn't that another amendment? Um, Can we please resolve the important step amendment before we start altering another paragraph and do this? Yes. Order? Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Oh, you're right. You're right. We got to stay with what we're focused on. That is the one advantage of being um, sticking by things. Can we go down, please, uh, Ray? Okay. Uh, this is, the decision has not come easily. The board has clearly heard from both communities and we realize that this merger is going to succeed. This is an important step in realizing our goals. Um, I would accept, let's vote on that change, please, unless there's further comment on that change. Can we add a comma after communities? Yep, good. Um, all in favor of this amendment, signify by saying aye. 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 Carl says aye. Great. Thank you. Okay. Um, so this is the document we have now. Do we need me to read it again or do we feel um, we can still add some sort of timeline? That was something that clearly I didn't feel terribly comfortable having the tiebreaker vote on that. Um, and clearly we, we might we need a little more discussion about the idea of some sort of deadline on this uh, to give it a little, as Carl, you're saying, give it a little more teeth. Well, I really feel we have additional documents that we're going to be releasing tonight that are going to really put more uh, okay. perspective. Okay. Um, does that does that feel all right to you, Carl? Or what do you? How do you want? Um, to yeah. Let's. I, I let, let's now. Now that we've resolved that that uh, second amendment, let's look at. You know, Bonnie brought up the point of during this process. Do we think that phrase is is superfluous, and do we want to just have the sentence be "We will undertake"? Or do we want to do, or are we okay with the, the during this process uh, beginning the sentence? I'm okay with it. I mean, we are 
talking think, about offering uh, the building and and yeah, the process. Line. And there's still a process. It is a process. Yeah. I I I feel <laughs> fine with that. The line I can live with that. David, you have something to say? Uh, I would like to make a recommendation about a change to a latter part of the statement. Mm -hmm. uh, down towards the bottom where it talks about authorizing attorney instructing our attorneys, I would propose adding our attorneys and consultants. Is everyone fine with that little edit there, Carl? Yeah. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs yeah. up. Good. Okay. Good. And consultants. Okay. Good. Is there further discussion on this statement? I'll call the question. Call the question. Um, I'll call a uh, roll call vote. Um, Amy, uh, yes to this statement. Yes or no? Uh, Carl, yes. yes or no to this yes. statement? Uh, Justine, yes or no to this yes. statement? Jenny, yes or no to this statement? Yes. Uh, Ethan says yes. Good. All right. That's unanimous. The board has now issued this statement. We can now move on to the second item. Um, David, just clarify for me. So, um, Ray, don't post it quite yet till we tell you. Um, so this is information that has been given to us uh, in confidence that we are now putting out to the public. So I understand we probably need to vote to release it in order to let it go out, correct? Before we can actually even show it on the screen. And then we can talk about it and maybe amend it. Uh, Jenny said she has some corrections. I don't know what process the board has followed in this regard in the past. I, I don't think it hurts to vote to release it. Indeed, I shared it. Uh, with staff and board members uh, as a draft um, mm -hmm. for discussion with the ultimate intent that it be publicly released. So uh, it, it does not contain uh, particularly confidential information or anything that uh, would, would harm or embarrass or any such thing for board members or the community. Okay. And I, I will entertain a motion. Uh, what are we going to call this? Um, um, Ethan, yeah, in the past, in the past, when we've had um, information that were that 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 either was generated as a result of an executive session or um, came out of an executive session, we have had a motion to release that information to the public. So this is this is the yes. the, the appropriate way to do that. And I move that we uh, release. And and I think it's important that we keep in the motion the word draft. I, re I remove, I, I, I move, I remove, I move that we release the uh, draft recommendations uh, from our attorney for public consumption. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, so moved by Carl, seconded by Amy. Is there any discussion of releasing this public? There being none, I will uh, call roll again, uh, Carl. Aye. Uh, Amy. Aye. Justine. Aye. Jenny. We're just saying aye to releasing the document. Yes, that's all we're saying aye to. And then I we can say correct. Aye, but I have several, several comments. Yep. Uh, we, uh, are you okay with releasing it and then we get to those comments and make some edits and get some information? Um, I guess so, yeah. I understand your hesitation. Um, there is, I mean, there's another motion I've, I want to move before us. And it was my big decision about when to do that. Well, we're in the middle of a vote. So I guess we got to finish that. You can, you want to abstain, Jenny? Sure. Do you want to go do this? Or do you yeah, need more discussion? I'll abstain. Just thinking, I don't want to put you I don't know if others have seen my comments, but I'm fine going through them. I actually looked, I looked at the document you sent back and I didn't see them. I just saw the document. So I wasn't there, sure. It's in track changes. If you open it in Word. Oh, I didn't. I don't, open it in I Word. don't think you could see them if you open them on your yeah, phone. That's it. I just, I didn't open. That's why I didn't see them. I'm sorry. I didn't get a chance to respond. Um, 
Uh, not quite sure, Carl. How do? What's your What's your advice, Carl, on this? I don't know. Um, if that's something we her, could open. Her, her comments. Her comments appear to me that they're just as author, but um, you know, she's 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 gone through them. They they uh, uh, range from grammatical to uh, you know being content oriented points. I think. Uh, I, I don't see a reason why we can't just we, we, we can't just bang through them in in, in public in versus public. going into executive session. Okay. Jenny, are, are 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 you okay with that? Yeah, that's good. I don't know I don't know Ray if there's somehow that if we could see them on the screen with track changes turned on if that might be easier. I'm not sure. Right. Well, let's finish this vote then. I think yeah. if the Jenny that allays your if that allays your concern, uh, how will you vote? Yeah, I say I am fine going through them. Good. Okay, then I, I say yes too. And why don't you put them up on public document and post it? And I'm going to just take a moment and go to the bathroom and I'll be right back. What do I need to do? Tell Ray what you need. You may have to send your I'll, version. I'll of email it to Ray. Yep. Right. Ray, it's it's the the, the, the one that, that ends with JDA comments in a, in a parenthetical at the end of the title. Is the one that I can open up in Google Docs, and I can see a bunch of author comments at the side of. I don't know if that's something uh, that you see. No, <clears throat> not yet. Can someone forward uh, Jenny's document to me? Uh, I have yet to see it. I saw Jenny's comments from last week, but yeah, I I'll haven't seen the right latest now. stuff. And I just shared it with you, Ray. What is your email address? Um, David, I can't seem to find it. It's D R U G H at F I R M firm. S is in Steve, P is in Paul, F is in Frank. So D Ru at firm SPF dot com. Um, I would just entertain that if, while this process is happening, if anybody else needs to take a break, it's not a bad idea. Take a moment. Hmm. I definitely see a lot there, Jenny. Um, that's great. Um, I am hoping that this is a um, kind of either a working document or or trying, you know, just the first of many many documents and, and information to be distributed. On, um, you know, a lot of your questions are stuff that we need to discuss and 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 hear about. Um, How do we want to go through this now that we've released it? Do we want to go through it item by item? Um, it is, I'm, I'm, I'm conscious of time. Um, it, it may also give our, our um, community some time to, we do have one more, well, two more things. I don't think the um, 7-3 should take long. Um, I don't hope so in the agreement merger review. Um, and then action items, basically we're taking those action items. So this is, 
before public comment, this is really sort of our last action. I'm just wondering how you want to go forward with this. Talking to me or in general? Sorry, Jenny, could you say that again? You're referring to me or in general? Uh, I'm asking everybody um, if we want to just put this out there and let the public look at it and get their comments, or do we want to go through it item by item? I believe there's some information that is up to the minute in this. Well, I wonder if we could release this and then follow it up with some of uh, Jenny's thoughts and comments and questions. And I mean, like I said, I was hoping that we would have something to get out and then it would be um, either it would be a, an evolving document or, or um, we would just have more to come. Ethan, I think it'd be, it, it, it might be appropriate to have Jenny go through and pick out the uh, content oriented comments versus the grammatical or uh, uh, um, stylistic comments mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and get response on that. Um, I know Ray's not, Ray's not showing the uh, comments to the side, but some of her comments are, are you know, grammatical and other ones relate to uh, clarifying content. Mm. Um, I've, I've got them on my screen. Oh, here, here we go. Um, yeah, I think it, it might be the way that it shows up on a screen. I think it might be hard to go through everything. It's kind yeah. of hard to see the comments next to the text, the way that it shows up on the screen. So I can see one thing that we, we need to clarify with David, and that is the 60%. That it yeah, is I, it's 60% of the um, actual subdivision, not the whole transfer. Uh, it, are you ready for me to answer that? I, I, the problem is I don't have Jenny's document still, so I can't see any of her comments or what's going on. But okay, on uh, the I, consultant I just is, emailed it to you. Hopefully you got it. Yeah, not yet, but that's okay. I'm going to do it on the fly. Uh, so the Mark Bannon's uh, preparation for the wastewater uh, permitting and concept planning is approximately 60% complete. We are no, we are not 60% of the way through the process. I just got it coming in, Jenny, thank you. Uh, so we're, that's only 60% of the wastewater stuff. Uh, we still need to dig some test pits due to the uh, age of the high school's wastewater system. So, uh, you know, once we do that, we can get to a 75% stage, which is uh, having the concept plan and, and preparing uh, to get some applications together. But we can't make a further movement on the wastewater stuff without an excavator. And that's one thing that I wanted to get out of tonight's board meeting was authorization to proceed with that work because it is a little bit extra. Uh, the reason why we have to do that is because state of Vermont wastewater permitting requires that a replacement area be identified for the wastewater system at the high school. High school system predates current, uh, state wastewater rules uh, is my understanding. So there was never one identified in the 1960s or so when the building was first constructed. So do you want me to go through big picture comments or how do you want to do this, Ethan? Yes, I think that's a good idea, Jenny. Let's do that. Well, Jenny, before you get started too, I think it's important to note that these questions came from the town of Rochester mm -hmm. and their liaison. These are general questions that were asked uh, a few months ago that uh, mm -hmm. we've already responded to, but we've also boiled it down a little to make it a little bit easier. So these are not... Uh, it's not our work product. It's uh, that led to the questions. 
But is, isn't a kind of a second purpose of this document? It sounds like is to be a public document. Because it Indeed. does, it, I mean, right now they're they're geared towards the town, but the public might be interested in different things that the town is interested in. Well, I think following Amy's comment uh, that this is the first of many and perhaps every meeting from now on, we will be releasing something like this, um, that as we get questions, we can clarify the information we release. Does that sound reasonable? Okay. So it's more of a, I'm just trying to get clarity of what the intent is. It's more of a, a working document that will be a status update yes. as we go through. Exactly. Yeah. We, go ahead, Amy. Well, I was feeling that it would be a good way to kind of get everybody up to speed as to um, what has been done and some of the questions that we have been looking at. And um, of course, there's more that are going to need to be dealt with and, and yeah, a working document that we can update and, and add to and uh, have addition, additional information just to be able to be as get stuff out to the public as best possible. And I think, so I think and, uh, go ahead. Edits, oh, sorry, go ahead. Um, so I think one big thing, if this is kind of, if the purpose of this is to be kind of a running status of where things are, we don't say where things are, we don't say what's been done except for one half of a sentence where we talk about initial work for the subdivision is 60% complete. Like what, do, you know, we don't say what that is. People might not know what Bannon has done already. And I think there needs to be a, a whole section on that. Are you taking notes, David? Well, again, it was something to get out to the public to, to give any indication of where we are because the public has not had any indication at all of what we have done so far and where we've come and where in. Oh, I, I totally agree. I'm just I saying think, that if that's yeah. what we're answering, we don't answer that question. I, 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 I think, hear you too, Jenny. David? I think, I think Jenny's comments are great. I think that uh, eventually they will all be answered and addressed. Uh, I don't think that that was the detail that Jenny has is, is uh, talking about in general in her comments go beyond what we thought the intent of this document was as an initial uh, entree to the community to answer some initial questions. Uh, I think, it, it, I think that's Jenny what might want a different document than what we prepared here. And if that's the case, then this is not the right uh, setting to to do a more detailed uh, drafting and describing the whole process. Uh, it would be better if I if it was laid out and discussed uh, maybe at the next meeting and instead we talk about the initial entree to the community here and then we can fill in some of the details uh, later on because that, that the, the Jenny's comments are uh, go a little far in the weeds I think uh, than what would at least this was originally drafted uh, for. Well, I think we're I think we're figuring out what exactly we wanted, and I don't know. And I think that's why we have to put this out and and react to it, and we'll get public reaction in a in a short time from it as well. And uh, but uh, but I I think that's exactly right, Jenny. I'm sorry we didn't get your responses in a more timely way to 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 work them into it, but. Well, I just uh, got the document yesterday. Yeah. No, 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 I understand. I don't blame you. I'm just saying the whole process. But this is, it is, a, it is a process. This is the beginning of a much more full public disclosure of this, of what we're doing in, in, in transferring and in, in going forward with this transfer process to the town. Um, so we're learning a lot tonight. We're learning a lot about what we want and about what kind of information we want to include. And we will continue with that up, up, update. Um, are there further comments on this then as a public document going out? Um, or can we move to um, uh, what was my main point at the high school building discussion, which is the next one? Anybody need to talk about this some more, this release? Carl? 
Um, no, other than to, to remind you, we need to actually vote. Well, we did vote to release the document. That's true. I guess we did before we had discussion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're, well, you're, 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 then, you're absolutely then, right. Then it was sort of like, well, now it's out here. Them. What do we want to do? Um, and I think we've discussed, we've realized that. We realized that we want a different form, uh, that we want some more information going out there. Um, and I think we've, we've heard that. Um, Justine, do you have any comments on this? No, I think, it's a good, I think it's a good beginning and I, I think it's helpful for the community to see, even if it's a working document, uh, it, it does sort of open up the forum a little more for questions and I think it could be really helpful. I, I like the fact that we're letting, uh, we'll be really much. Yeah. Carl? Actually, I, I'm sorry, J Justine uh, uh, just suddenly made the thought that I wanted to say pop into my head. Um, what we what we should probably quickly quickly decide, Ethan, is is how to this working document. Uh, you know, the public should respond, and that you know I would think would be sending emails to you or to to, to the board, and that knowing that those questions would not be answered until mm -hmm. the next boarding, board meeting or conversation, so that everyone under everyone has the clear expectation that um, as we put the working document forward, we're not going to be you know engaging in a in a in a, in a we appreciate people's comments and things they want clarified, but we're, we're not going to be responding uh, until our next board meeting. I think that's very fair because obviously also we're trying, I'd, I'd like to, you know, within the time constraints of public comment, uh, you know, whatever we, we give, you know, whatever people have to say, um, we will record those statements. But this is a process of getting information from David, getting information from us to, to put it out there. And it's not something that can happen necessarily quickly. So, so what exactly are we doing with this document? I mean, I just uh, got it yesterday, and I have a lot of comments, and it doesn't seem to really matter. That no, the, it very much matters. That the, the public I, gets to see it before. No, I, before I, it's I, something that we should be releasing. I voted yes because I wanted to talk about it, not because I want to release it for every single person to see. Well, I mean, it's 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 out there. Um, it is not what you would like as a document. You would like more detail, um, uh, but it's our first effort at this. And so um, I would say that we would do a, 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 next, a next version that has more details addressing your questions, which we could release between meetings um, or we could release um, at the next meeting. Um, that's really what the board's intent is or, or what the board's wish is. Does that does that make sense? This is a first step because it is. Really oh, absolutely! I just feel like I really didn't. I guess I didn't understand what I was saying yes to when I agreed to oh, okay. um, release Sorry. the document. Well, I mean, we're in a public meeting, and so it, it it was. It's made public as soon as it's it's been put up here. That's what we were saying. Oh, yeah. I understand that. Yeah, um, it's just so the I people do think... aren't able to see the comments on the screen like it is, so we don't really aren't really going over anything. Well, we can we can take the time to go over point by point. David just said that's going to take, you know, it's going to take time to get the details that you want. If that's what you want to do right now. Well, um, I'm not saying that it needs to be the way I want it, but I think that. No, I think um, you're absolutely right. I think I think we need your details. I'm, I've been looking at your comments. We need that kind of detail going out there um, to make this much clearer document. Um, I mean, we, it is a work. It is a working document. So I'm. Yeah. You know, obviously, I don't. I'm not trying to hide anything, but mm -hmm. I just think that we definitely need to change some things. Well, then, David, can you take her comments and come back to the board with a draft that includes responses to them? Uh, can I respond to her comments uh, happily? Uh, I think one of the issues here is that some board members were looking for an introductory document to yeah. get oh, out no. to the public and. Uh, maybe uh, others want something much more detailed and much more specific that reads like a roadmap to the transaction. Uh, they're two very, very different things. Yeah. Uh, the latter taking a lot of work. I mean, I, we would probably be here for two hours if I went through and answered uh, all of Jenny's questions, even just speaking. Uh, I'm happy to. I know the answers uh, for the most part, but I, I think the better step is to decide whether you know it, it 
is for me to take Jenny's comments under advisement and prepare a written response for the board's November, uh, December meeting or its next meeting, or, if it would like to schedule a special one in the meantime. Or I guess another kind of independent question is, I mean, these are just my comments and, you know, others may disagree. I mean, I guess we should talk about what level of detail we want to include. Well, that, I don't think we need two separate documents. I think that's ridiculous. Well, no, I, I mean, that gets to a little bit of what I'm, I want to talk about in the next article, which is about um, how we go forward talking about the building. And, and uh, well, you know, very much opening this up so that it can be an ongoing thing. And maybe this is a document that we post on our web page, um, you know, that we keep updating it if, if we agree to go more public with how our discussions are going to go. Um, this is a first step. And I think your comments are absolutely heard and important. But I do think in the interest of time tonight, we will not go through them step by step. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't expect to go no, through them all tonight. No, but I think I think you've given David the the outline for how to go forward. And that that is what I, I, I and I would hear from everyone, um, Amy, Justine, Carl, is that what you would like is a more thorough document that answers Jenny's questions. Justine. I think um, while I'm in support of this document being out into the public, I think a more thorough document would be helpful. And I think it's also helpful for the public to see the process. So I think this is all a good idea. Good, Carl. Um, I, I agree with Justine. I think that, you know, uh, getting Jenny's questions answered, I think that as, you know, I have, you know, I, I, I read the document, um, uh, when when Jenny talked about her comments, actually, so I, so I read it, looking at her comments, and I, I I agree with a lot of her questions, and I probably will have some of my own, and I will probably forward those on to David as well, and I would encourage, oh. you know, the other board members to, to to do the same sort of thing, so that it does become, I mean, if it's going to be a working document, it needs to it needs to change, it needs to evolve, and it needs to grow. Amy. Um, I agree. I think it is important to have as much detail as possible, but I do also want something that is uh, for the public to be able to consume. And sometimes if something is so detailed, um, it could be difficult, um, a very large document. So I don't know if there is a, um, a, you know, like a first page bullet points of, you know, here's the highlighted steps that are going to happen. And then you will find your detailed information later on in you know uh in in the document i think that's a good suggestion executive good summaries suggestion. are always really helpful in in in, in long documents like this mm -hmm. well, and and I, I think, people can just read the one page or they can read the whole thing if they want well i think the goal of this document was an executive mm -hmm. summary absolutely not to not to provide mm -hmm. a uh, hundred step list on how this transaction no, is going to occur and so it, it, the way yeah. it reads right now is very broad uh, they, for that they reason. Clear. I, you, you, did, you did what we asked for. So I don't want to make, I think you did what we asked for and now we have responded to that and we're giving you further instructions. So um, feel good about that. I think it's a great first step. I'm very glad it's out there. We obviously, and I'm sure the public is gonna have questions too. Um, but I think, yeah, now we know how to go forward. And that's exactly the purpose of bringing a document like this out. Good. Um, I would like to move on then, if we can, to 7-3. Um, and for me, this is, uh, there's one question that we didn't answer uh, uh, the last meeting, or maybe it was two meetings ago. Um, and that is um, whether, uh, whether we should uh, have our, building meetings in the public session. And uh, a basic statement that I would like to go with is that we will discuss the high school transfer in public session unless executive session is absolutely necessary. Now that may be too vague, but that is the statement I would like to go forward with. Um, and uh, I, again, like we've been doing tonight, I'd like to move that statement and then discuss it and see how we go with it. Can you repeat that again? Ethan, sure. I can write it down. That that uh, high school that uh, the RSUD discussions of the.
the building high school building transfer uh, take place in public session unless executive session is absolutely necessary. I'll entertain a motion. Let's just get this in discussion, David. Does anybody want to move it? If not, that's fine. We can do something else. I make that motion of what you just said. Jenny, is there a second? Second. Amy seconds. Okay, now we're in discussion. And David? Well, I think it's important to recognize that a big part of the discussion about the property transfer needs to be between two entities, that being the school district and the town. And that meetings uh, should need to occur uh, where their views are offered on some specifics that are more appropriate, uh, not in public session. I'm just going to throw that out there. Mm -hmm. uh, the board has its prerogatives and can have public discussions, but there are certain details that are more appropriately discussed between the principals and consultants uh, representing and lawyers, frankly, representing each party. Further discussion, I'm, Carl. Well, I, I am fully against this motion. Um, Vermont public Vermont public meeting law requires that only under very specific circumstances can we go into in, 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 into uh, executive session to discuss private matters. I think David is very much on point and I think that it's been misconstrued that the board is trying to hide. We have to have a legitimate reason to go into public session. Otherwise, we do all our business in, 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 in public and I don't think we need to, to, to reaffirm that we're following the laws. Sorry, so by following the laws, we should be staying in executive session for these discussions. In other words, you're against this motion. Is that true? <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to unmute myself and turning my camera off. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think the motion is redundant. I think that the board has always had a commitment to do as much of its business in accordance with Vermont, with, uh, uh, Vermont public meeting laws and do as, as much of its business in public as, as it possibly can. I don't believe that we've, you know, at least under my interpretation that we've gone into public session, in, in, into a, a executive session rather to, to hide things. I think we've gone in there for perfectly le legitimate reasons. And I mean, I suppose we can have, I mean, if you want to have the motion just to reaffirm that we're following the law, we can, but I, I, I think it's kind of silly. I, I, I raise it because I have never seen any definition. It seems like everything we've talked about has been in, it's been considered it needed to be in executive session. And I don't see that that's been serving us at all because a lot of the stuff we've been talking about is, you know, uh, details about who's the surveyor and, and that we're doing it and, and a lot of evidence that somebody could actually, that we're actually doing, make, take, taking some action. And I think it's been clear, uh, it's it's been, obscured to the point where even the party we're interested in transferring to the select board has been confused about our intention, which is why really the whole point of this meeting is to clarify some of these steps. So I just, I, as I say, I, I think we need to, we need to keep stuff in the open. Most of the stuff that David told us, you know, without releasing any details, but in the last, some of the last executive sessions, seemed to me like stuff that was perfectly fine to talk about in public. So I'm just trying to find, I'm trying to find a dividing line. I, I think I that we got into, I think Jenny. that we got into details that probably could have been discussed into public, but I think that it was kind of um, not staying on task to what was in executive session. I think that there are things, and I would refer to others in terms of what needs to be in executive session and what doesn't need to be in executive session, because I don't, know exactly the rules on that but i think the intentions have been well it's just that we've um i guess um drifted into other questions or conversations that may well, have been in public well, let me get to other people before i talk again amy amy do you have any comment on this oh, she may be putting someone to bed justine 
I have not been present for the executive session, so I cannot speak to whether or not that information um, should be public, but I obviously support following the laws. I think it's helpful to reiterate the fact that the board is following the law and have that in the minutes so people are reminded that the board isn't hiding things in executive session. Oh, great. Um, short of Amy, then here's what I would like, and maybe David, you can give us this. Can we make some differentiation of what needs to be in executive session and what can be public? I think that we've completed a certain percentage of a survey or, um, you know, or wastewater certainly seems to me to be in public session and be useful for public, you know, for public consumption. I guess I need, I, I'm looking for some rules because right now I see none. I see that we're putting everything in executive session and that is not helping us. Ethan, Patty has. Uh, I think, I think Ethan, you're creating a false dichotomy. I think that it's not a question of executive session versus open session. Instead, some parts of this process cannot, should not occur in public because it's too unwieldy. Uh, but I don't know what those are. That's what I'm saying. Uh, Tell me what those ones are. Uh, I would like to not, I would not like to do that for fear of uh, releasing some, some confidential inf client information. Okay. Uh, but I, I ask you to understand that a real estate purchase and lease options are it allow are allowed reasons to go into executive sessions for a reason. There may come a time when the school board and the select board need to sit down to hash out uh, and negotiate some things. And just like labor negotiations, that best occurs in executive session. Uh, sure, status updates and summaries on progress are one thing, but the details and specifics of negotiations and uh, things that we may know about the details of the property uh, is, uh, is more appropriate, uh, at least to, to be an executive session. And we can provide periodic updates on the progress, but uh, I, I would advise the board not to uh, negotiate this transaction uh, in public. Patty, uh, we'll invite you in to make a comment. Can you hear could me? you identify yourself, Patty, just so we know, for anybody who doesn't know who you, who you are? Pat Harvey, Select Board, can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. Good. Um, from my understanding, the open meeting law uh, gives you the right to have an executive session for real estate transactions so as not to erode the transaction. In other words, if there were uh, multiple buyers you don't want to be discussing in public what someone offered versus another buyer. That is the reason why you go into executive session for real estate transactions. Um, if we're retaining the transaction so that it's uh, the town of Rochester and the, so the school board for the dollar, which was already public knowledge, that would be fine to be discussed publicly. But with your intent to go out on the open market and put the property for sale to uh, the general public, that probably wants to retain all of the discussions into an executive session. Um, if the decision was made that, you know, this is the way we're gonna go with the town of Rochester, yeah, it should be public. But if you're going to be uh, bringing in other buyers, it definitely should stay in executive. Good. Any firmer, Amy, have you had a chance to talk about this? So we're still talking about my, my motion, which has been moved about keeping a public session. Um, and I'm perfectly happy to have it voted down, by the way. I wanted this discussion. Um, I, I think it's in, uh, has been an important discussion. Um, I, you know, I do agree with Carl that it kind of, um, maybe we just need to reaffirm that we are following the law. Uh, with the, with executive session um, and that we maybe get some clarity from David on, on some of these, you know, um, questions that you have about um, 
you know what is what is some of these topics that that really are are um, the executive session topics. I'm not really expressing myself very well, well here. Well, let me um, let me try and suggest something. Is that I think one of the problems for me is we come out of executive session and we often have very little to say. And I think w within that executive session, I think we need to make decisions about, okay, is this releasable? Is this not releasable? And then immediately after the executive session, we release details of the wastewater or something like that that we feel is not confidential information. And I think if we do it in that moment, then the people, public has some sense of what we're dealing with in the executive session. In which case, yes, we don't need my motion. We just need to be a little bit more um, savvy in how we uh, release information. Does that solve your problem, Carl? Um, yes, it does. Okay. You know, I think it's, I, I think, you know, David makes good points. There's reasons that you can go into an executive session to discuss a real estate transaction. And I think Patty, you know, echoed them that, you know, it'd be a different, you know, as much as we all hope that the town of Rochester is going to, is going to take the building uh, for a dollar and it's going to be a community resource for, for years to come. That is not a decision that has yet been made. And until then, the board has, has a, a duty to uh, uh, protect some of the details in, in, in light of the fact that the building may still end up on the open, open market. Okay. Uh, Justine, do you have any further comment? And then Jenny. No. No further comment. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Good. Jenny, do you have anything further to say? Um, no, I don't have anything else. I agree with Ethan and what Carl just said. Okay. Well, then let's, um, because we've moved it and put it up there, um, let's, uh, let's put it to a vote. All in favor of my statement of keeping everything in the public statement unless in the public session, unless absolutely necessary to go into executive session. Um, uh, Carl, how do you vote? Yes or no? I abstain. Uh, Justine, how do you vote? I vote no. Uh, Amy, how do you vote? No. Jenny, how do you vote? No. And I also am going to vote no. Um, so, uh, but I really, with the emphatic um, lesson that when we come out of an executive session talking about this, we come out with a list of items that can be released to the public. Good. Okay. I believe Patty, uh, Amy, you want to introduce Patty? Patty, is it, sorry, is it Patty or Pat? I, I, not sure sometimes. Either one. Okay, fine. Thank you. Um, Amy, could you just, uh, you want to introduce, or Pat, you had a statement from the select board? I do. Um, we had a select board meeting earlier this evening, and um, we did have some discussion during our select board meeting that uh, was public, so anybody could watch that on Perka when it's released. And I do have a statement to make, and I'm going to read it as it was uh, designated in our meeting. As much as the school board awaits a decision from the town of Rochester to acquire the high school building, the select board of Rochester is looking to the current school board to make the commitment of remaining in the current district setup and not pursuing on merging. This is a statement that we are looking for guidance from the school board um, so that we know that we're all going in the same direction together. Um, we, we know that there were some, uh, some changes in, uh, well, a new school board member, welcome aboard, and, and some changes in, in how the school board is um, formed and who does what. And so now I think we've got everything settled in. Um, we understand that one thing that didn't seem to have been mentioned all this evening was uh, we were interrupted by COVID. Um, so when we were just getting uh, uh, some steam going on all of this, um, I'm very happy that the school board took some time off to figure out how to get our students back into those buildings and get them educated. And you did a wonderful job. Um, so maybe things have settled down now, we're getting back to it. That's how I view what what is what has transpired, let's say, in the last 12 months. Um, so uh, as long as things proceed normally, um, 
we've gone back to things that are said in, in public and on social media and rumors off the streets, I guess is what I'd call them. And um, we would just like to hear directly from the board, and I represent the select board in this, saying, are we committed to going forward with continuing with the merger after the five-year period? Um, if, the, if the rumors on the street and the social media wasn't uh, raging with the word unmerge so much, we, we would never be asking this question, but here we are in this position, and we would like the school board, and you don't have to answer tonight, to uh, give, us, give us your thoughts on how you think that we're going to proceed. And uh, with that blessing, if, if you were to give us that blessing, we're more than happy to grab your hands and we'll all walk down the yellow brick road together on this. That's our statement. Very good. Do we want to um, respond now or do we want to hold on to this? Um, Carl? Ethan, when does the public get to speak? This is key. Public, public comment. Time. It's coming up. We have one more item and then it's public comment. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, Patty, uh, I spent uh, a, a lot of my hours and a lot of my hairline on uh, working uh, uh, towards uh, bringing that merger together. Um, as I'm sure you're aware, uh, you know the public can can uh, uh, warn a question for the annual for the annual meeting um, with uh, a certain percentage of the vote. So that's something that that neither Stockbridge Select Board, Rochester Select Board, or the RSUD School Board, you know, can have any, any anything uh, uh, to say about it. But barring barring that kind of populist uh, a, a sort of sort of movement, you know, I, I can tell you that personally, I think that this, you know, that, that that's solving this this problem and working our way through is really the 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 best outcome for the 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 children. Um, from three to 18 in our two towns. So I can tell you that the, 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 the reorganization of this board, um, you know, it was, was not, at least in my mind, does not change, you know, my position, at least personally, uh, on, on the importance of, of the merger and making the, work, the merger work. It is not pretty. It is not optimal. It's not, I think... You know, I, I really think just like in, 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 in Stockbridge, there's people that, that, that still wish we had our own school. I'm sure there's people in Randolph that wish they still had a viable high school because there are there is so much history in that building and in that community or, uh, around that. But the reality of, of, of our current student count and our population is that, you know, at least personally, I can tell you that I think the merger should work and I will, will support going forward with 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 uh, working working to solve the problems of our two communities together for whatever that's worth. Great. Good. Further comment. Amy, Jenny? Amy? Jenny? Just yeah, I, I, I definitely support you know the merger and I hope that it, both towns can work through our differences. I think that's all of our all of our kids to it what really should be about which we don't seem to talk much about Amy? Yeah. yeah my comment really goes back to my initial board comment this this meeting is that um i do support this merger um but i do understand that there is um, a lot of loud voices uh, that do not support this merger there's as i was noting in the uh, survey, it was 39% strongly agree or or agree that this merger should dissolve. And I'd like to know why. And um, now I'm concerned that this is a, a little bit of a stumbling block. So I, I think we need to work through this. And I think we need to we need to know what the problems are. And uh, but I am committed to this merger. Justine. Um, I, I'm absolutely committed to the merger. I do think there is work to be done before we can provide or I can provide a true response to that, uh, you know, the select board statement. I think the the high school building is a weight on that decision. 
And I think that um, there's pro a lot more unpacking to do with regards to what Amy mentioned at the beginning and, and why certain members of the public would vote in that way. So um, personally, I'm in support of the merger. I think that as a board, we are working toward figuring out ways to make it work, but I think there's a lot of work to be done to, to decide whether that's gonna happen beyond the, the time limit. Um, I'll just uh, finish up that yes, I support the merger as again, as I said earlier, it's why I'm here. It's why I'm on the board. Uh, it's why I stepped up to be chairman um, is to make this work is to hear all parties and try and find common ground. Um, I, and, and moving forward with that, I don't think, yeah, we, um, we don't have a clear answer. I mean, the board, as you've just heard, Patty, is for the merger and is for supporting the merger. Um, you know, how much you are swayed by the public is, is your call. Um, we hear them, we hear their concerns. I'm, I'm sure we're about to hear their concerns. Um, and, uh, um, and, and we will respond and we will keep working with them. Obviously this thing I'm bringing up next has to do with that. Um, and hopefully we'll get some hearing from there, but uh, the board position is clear. Uh, we are going forward with the merger and to make it work. Okay, thank you very much. I mean, I can't ask for anything more than that. So with the board's support, um, we, are, we are ready to go to the next level. Um, the document that started with my email, um, your second document of tonight, mm -hmm. uh, that's perfect. Bring it on. Uh, that was just an initial framework of things that brainstormed out of my mind about, oh my God, what are we going to do about this? I have another email with the select board that has even more points in it. So. <laughs> <laughs> So you guys got off actually a little bit easy. Um, so um, I think that the select board is throwing its support through this. And we did say that publicly this evening. And uh, I am saying it to the board. So yes, let's, uh, let's join forces and see what we can do about going forward. Thank, Thank you me. very much. Thank you very much for being here tonight. Yep. All right. I don't want to take a lot Ethan, of time. Oh, yeah. Ethan, before, before I sign off, uh, one housekeeping item. Uh, there is this issue of doing test pits at the high school, in my opinion, that needs to happen. It's mandatory in order to move yes. forward and proceed with permitting. It's an extra cost and approximately $400 is what I've been told above the original estimate. So I, I just need some support from the board to, to move forward with that. Um, we have a motion to, uh, is this an increase in the amount we're doing? Uh, it's for Mark Bannon's estimate going up to, uh, from, I think it was 2,800 to about, uh, well, 30. somewhere in the range of 3,000, not very far. Okay. Maybe 3,200. Um, how do we want to, uh, Carl, do you have a? Uh, I, I move, we, uh, we authorize uh, increasing the uh, allowable spending for the Mark Bannon Consultancy Agency to uh, $3,300. Uh, do I have a second on that? Uh, second. Just hold, hold one second before you vote. Let me oh, just yeah. let me just make sure I got the numbers right. Otherwise, I would accept a friendly amendment to say to increase the estimate to uh, by four hundred dollars. Let me just hold on. Sorry, no worries. Yeah, might be an easier way to go about it. Loading. <laughs> uh, it would be going from thirty-two fifty to uh, thirty-six fifty. Uh, I, I uh, uh, amend my uh, I amend my motion to uh, change it to uh, read the uh, allowable fees for the Mark Bannon Consulting Agency to increase by four hundred dollars. Thank you, Carl. So uh, seconded. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you all very much. Uh, we'll be in Thank touch. You, Have a good night. Thank you. You're welcome. Good. Um, I don't want to thank you, David. Uh, basically, it's this idea of going over. Um, it's something I'll bring as an action item. It's just a thought and probably should have been in board comment. But I think the idea of sitting down with the merger agreement and a committee of community members and some board members, not too big. This is, I, I talked to Dean about the principle of this, and she said this would be fine. 
um, uh, committee members and board members. She said not to make it too big. Um, to sit down and look and, t and hash through and talk through the merger agreement and and now that we have more time to look at it and see what the sticking points are, see what the confusions are. Um, and I would just like to get sort of a yay nay to come back with a proposal for a committee for our December meeting. Um, and that can be handled quickly unless there's more discussion. Justine, do you have a thought on this? Yay. <laughs> Good. Carl, do you have a thought on this? Um, sure. I, I worry about, I, I worry about, uh, uh, you know, where we'll be with the budget and, you know, I, I don't want to, to set us up for another marathon meeting, but I, I agree that it needs to be talked about. Yes. Um, uh, by the way, this would be something that would be ongoing. It's, you know, committee meetings, there's lots to figure out. And of course, nothing could be changed without communities, both communities voting on it. That was, Adina was very clear on. So this is not a quick process. It is, but it is something looking toward the uh, five year sort of appraisal of where we are. Amy. I think it's a good idea for just that. It helps get everybody a little more familiar with, with that articles of agreement and it just begins the process of that um, evaluation. Oh, Jenny. Yeah, I think it sounds good. Great. Okay, good. I will go forward and sort of put together a proper proposal for our December meeting. All right. Let's get into uh, public comment now. What have I got here? I've got a bunch of phone numbers. Let me work down the list. It's going to be some video participants first. And I will try and keep my... Uh, when you announce, first thing I want to say is that this is the comment time. We may not have an answer for you um, to your question. Um, I would rather say we've taken your question in than make up an answer on the spot of something I don't know. Um, certainly any of the questions, we've talked about a lot of issues tonight. Um, and uh, we will take notes on all your questions, uh, but we may not have answers for all of them tonight. Um, I will go through all the numbers, the people on the video and the numbers. And then we'll go back um, if anybody has an extra comment after that. And I will start with Joanne. Do you have a comment for us tonight? And I will give you plenty of time just in case it takes time to unmute. Joanne, are you there? Yep, I see you unmuted. Can't hear you though. Are you talking right now? Sorry, yeah, not. Can you hear me now? Oh yes, now I can. Yes, and now I can hear you. Okay, so I have a few questions. I want to say, well played, Rochester. That was really interesting. So, um, one, no external rental because I'm sure we would have to fix up the building in order to rent it. Two. Um, if you could please post every document from tonight, including Jenny's final one, that would be great. Um, someplace where everybody can see it. Um, I feel bad the statement, the earlier statement lost all its teeth. And um, what are we talking about for expense on this subdivision? That seems to be the big secret. Good. Is that all? <laughs> no, 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 I'm not, and I don't mean it that way. Sorry, up. no judgment. Go ahead. Those are very good um, expense for subdivision. I mean, is that really what this whole thing is about? They don't, they want to make sure we stay merged so we share the expense? Mm. I mean, seriously, Liz, that seems, I mean, is that it? No. Okay, so why does it matter if we merge or unmerge? Uh, because I uh, believe that the only way to keep schools in both our communities is to uh, be merged. That um, there's much evidence pointing to the fact that either of us go independent, our schools uh, will not be supported by the state. Actually, I've read opposite of that lately, but okay. Well, I'd, I'd be curious to see that. I'll if you share have that information with you. Yep. Yeah, please do. Um, that's certainly the information we're going on, but I, I, one of the things I want to be 
always calling into question as assumptions all of us any of us make i appreciate that yeah that that, that we follow it up by facts and information yep so patty um is that i mean is it the expense sharing or what what's why is there the caveat that we can't unmerge there's no there's no concern over expense sharing um the concern is that the school board and the town go through the expense and if we unmerge we get our entire campus back and we did all this for nothing true okay it's the beginning and the end of the reasoning behind this um you know there's there's no secret agenda behind any of it oh i there's, understand there's a lot of time and energy besides the as you can see from tonight's meeting there's a lot of time and energy being put into this and if it's for not it it would be a, a great waste of time and resources that could be you know placed somewhere else especially by the school board absolutely i understand that that's um i saw the words bond in some of jenny's writing as it was like scrolling by are we talking about bonding some of this expense i believe those are the existing bonds okay the existing the 350 yes okay and were those bonds, have we figured out where those connected? Were those in, were those attached to the high school building? I don't know the answer to that yet. Okay. Uh, but uh, I believe there has been some investigation of that. So we can, um, we can in get that it. document. Yeah, there is some yeah. information about it, that in the document. And that will be posted tomorrow? Or yeah, it, it's part, it's, it talks about two different bonds and one of the bonds was for the elementary building. Um, and the, I forget what the bond was for. And then the second bond was for um, combined for the elementary and the high school building. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank Tom. you, Joanne. <laughs> uh, uh, Karen Rubin, if you have a comment, please. Um, I do, I actually have a couple of questions. So mm -hmm. I'll go slowly, Ethan, so you can write them down. Yep. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> The current custodian for the Rochester School Campus, um, is that a single FTE position um, for 40 hours a week? Um, and the other question I had in regards to that was the additional uh, position that has been brought, um, put out in the newspapers for the seven day a week person was that factored into the budget and if so what line item was that factored into as far as an expense for that additional personnel my other question is the math interventionist i understand from earlier that that is a 1.0 fte is that being shared equally between the two campuses stockbridge and rochester how is that position being divvied out um, in regards to the campus and then and i apologize because i'm multitasking two meetings at once so i missed a little bit of what um patty was saying but can you just reiterate what she said in regards to the merger status of the agreement between the school board and rochester of the purchase of the building was that even after the five-year term has expired, um, and I apologize for missing that again. I have one meeting in one ear and another meeting in another. Um, I'm not sure I'm understanding your question. Um, you, you, it's, it, I, I'm not sure, because Patty basically said that they were, is it what she just said to Joanne or what she said earlier? What she said earlier, Rochester Select Board would no. agree to the purchase of the building providing there is no uh dissolving of the merger i i don't know if i heard that correctly yes that was well there was their concern and as she just said to joanne the idea that um you know there's a lot of energy going into this and if suddenly we were a single campus because they were separated merged and we had to deal with our own stuff then suddenly uh, you know it's quite possible we might need the school back again and it would all be for naught so I think that's that was the reason she just gave that it was important for them to know that we were committed to uh, moving forward with the merger. Continue. But no disillusion of the merger indefinitely. So after the five years that was originally agreed upon is up to re revisit that decision, 
that five year mark is off the table. Mm, that's still part of the agreement. I'm just saying uh, she wanted to know what the board's intent was. The, whether the board was fully behind the merger and, and Patty could cor cor uh, correct me if I'm misstating this for you. Um, it had nothing to do as far as I know with the five year. Well, uh, we're, we're not on merging for the first five years. So that that's a mute point. Nothing, nothing can be done mm -hmm. until five year period is over, but we are halfway through it, uh, approaching three years into it. So, you know, we see that end of that five year uh, period and and that that is what we were talking about at the end. We can't do anything before that. So uh, obviously I was talking about at the end of the five year period that we're locked into. So the select board's position is that we would extend past the five year period if you agree to purchase the building? Uh, I think we would uh, agree from what we said today is that we would agree to keep the merger, whether, you know, regardless of how the building goes to the town or somewhere else, it's, it's about the merger and we believe in the merger. Okay, I, I don't think that actually answered my question, but in the meantime, if you wanna take um, the other two questions that I asked and maybe address those. Um, is it possible, Bonnie, are you still on? Yes, I am. Uh, did you get those? Uh, is the custodian of F one FTE 40 hours? Uh, we have one full-time custodian and we have one uh, 0.5 custodian. And um, the the one hour a day position for the high school uh, was is not included in the budget, but we have reduced by a half time custodial position. Um, so, the anticipation is that there's funds from that position to cover the, the one hour a day um, high school position. And Bonnie, I think to clarify, by reduced, you mean someone retired and right. that would post the budget, um, Correct. Karen, so that position is still in the budget. So there are funds available from that person. Correct. So you currently have a full-time FTE and you have in the budget for a 0.5 FTE, but that 0.5 FTE is currently not a filled position. No, we have, let me say, I didn't say that very clearly. Let me say that again. We have a full-time position and a half-time position now. Um, those two positions are filled. There was another half-time position that when the person retired, uh, we did not fill, but the funds from that position are still in the budget because the retirement took place uh, too late to make that change. Okay. And then the, Go ahead. One, the seven days position. So that that's where the funds are coming from. Right. And then the uh, math interventionist, is that split between the two campuses? So currently we have a makeup of um, several literacy interventionists, uh, one on the Stockbridge campus and two, they're not full time, but two people um, on the Rochester campus. And uh, we will be reconfiguring that is the best word I'm gonna use right now, Karen, and we just don't know in what ways. So each building has a math interventionist that'll meet the kids' needs depending on where we're at with our data, which as you and I chatted about is not very impressive in the math mm -hmm. category. Yeah, we definitely need help in the math category, that's for sure. So the proposed position that was referred to earlier with the draft budget, that's not an additional math per interventionalist, that's using one of our current ones? Yes. Are, we, pick are we picking up an additional math <laughs> interventionalist? Because we definitely need that as much support for the students as possible. Right, so it's adding on because some of the current interventionists that we have are not full time and switching their job description and training. Okay. And, and the expectation of that 1.0 FTE for the math interventionalist is to split equally among the two campuses? I think, I think that's the goal. I, uh, what do you think, how would you word it, Bonnie? Well, I think we'd probably look, I, I don't think probably, I think we'd look at who are our youngsters that aren't 
um, meeting the standard, meeting the proficiency, and try and divide the position up in a way that looks that bases is bases it on youngsters versus you know half here and half there. Okay, thank you, ladies. Thank you, Ethan. Thank you, Karen. Um, the next is Catherine Shankman. I think she just stepped away from her computer a second. I'm here, I'm okay. here but I, I don't Good. have any questions. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, next, I'm gonna go down to phone numbers. Um, this first number is, and uh, I think it's right, star six to unmute and star six to mute again. And the first number is area code 443, last two digits 15. And please identify yourself and, and what town you're from. Again, area code 443, last two digits 15, if you have a comment. Okay, I'll move on. 802 um, 02 are the last two digits. Star six to unmute. Please identify yourself in your town if you have a comment. Okay, I'll move on. 802 uh, last two digits 38. Star six to unmute. Hey, Ethan, it's Keith. Uh, Keith, hi, Keith. How you doing? Good. Good. Um, you know, I have a few comments. Um, I guess the first comment that I'd like to make, I was extremely disheartened by the comment made by the Rochester Select Board, basically saying, um, if we don't agree to stay in this merger, uh, they're not interested in purchasing the building. Um, I was hoping that the school board would have taken a different approach and basically said, well, if those are the terms, we can't make that commitment and we'll just sell the, the building to an, an outside party. Because I really feel that that was uh, quite distasteful. Um, the other thing that I'd like to mention is that I know that um, in the beginning of the meeting, it was said that uh, I think the number was 39 percent of the people are not pleased with the with the merger and would be willing to dissolve it. Um, when I looked at the survey that I have, which may be dated, um, I saw the number was 36%. But the other number that needs to be addressed also in that uh, survey is 26% of the people were, I believe, classified as neutral, which you know kind of equates to a um, undecided. So. You know, that number of 36, 39, whatever it is, is probably greater than than it's represented in that survey. So I, I think you need to dive into those numbers uh, with a little more detail than just taking the 36 or 39 percent. Um, other comments where I appreciate Carl's position looking at the budget. I think he was uh, dead on when he said, well, we already know salaries are going up 3.6%. Why are we sticking to 3%? Because we know other related costs are also going to be higher. And those numbers should be reflected and should be considered seriously in terms of the, what the budget, the ultimate budget would be. So I'm, I'm not sure why, oh, well, we took 3%, and that's what we're going to stick to, and it's a draft. I, you know, it, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, so, uh, you know, the other thing is um, I know that the wording that I had provided was watered down, and that's fine. That's, that's the decision the board needs to make. But by taking out some of that language, it doesn't change anything. I mean, there's no timeline, so it can drag on forever. Mm -hmm. it, it just doesn't make any sense. Where are we going with this? Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I think, you know, as far as I'm concerned, as an individual, uh, tonight's meeting was extremely disappointing. And it sort of, uh, to me, indicates that, you know, Rochester gets what Rochester wants. 
And while that may not be very popular to say out loud, um, I think it needs to be said. And that's what I have to say. Good. Thank you for your comments, Keith. I got it down. Uh, 802, last two digits, 5-3. Any comment? A star 6 to unmute. 5-3. Hey, Vic. All right, I'll Ethan, move on. Hey, Ada, Ethan, two. this is Vic Roboto. Oh, sorry, Vic. Okay. Gotcha. Hi. <laughs> Wasn't too quick on the trigger there. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to um, comment on the uh, the notion that uh, um, people are unsure about the merger, and I think that I think there's a good story to tell about what's been accomplished and the potential for further accomplishments. But I think I think there's just the word is just not getting out publicly to Rochester anyway. I don't know about Stockbridge. You can't speak to that, but um, I think I think if there's a way to tell more of the story of the upside of the merger, it, it should be done. I think uh, I think people will respond to that favorably. That's all. Just a suggestion. Great. Thank you, Vic. Hey, Ethan, I just, this is Catherine again. I just want to thank, this is, This has been a very educational process tonight, and I want to thank the board for their perseverance and stamina and for be, for really just trying to work with everyone. It's very impressive. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, 802.69, star six to unmute. If you have a comment, please identify yourself. Yes, hi, Carl. This is Leslie. Um, I want to ask my question that I ask every year. <laughs> Do we have a special ed uh, certified in the Wilson method um, in both schools um, or, or combined to both schools? Um, and how are we ensuring that these children are not falling between the cracks like my children did? Bonnie, Lindy, can you address that, please? Yes. Hi, Leslie. So um, our special educator is shared, and she is um, certified in Wilson. And um, so thank you for keeping us in check with that. It's appreciated. And how we ensure that is, I have to say that we're probably doing more frequent uh, data checkpoints for kiddos to make sure that they're still progressing instead awesome. of waiting for large chunks of time to go by. Awesome. And, yeah. Thank you yeah. very much. Um, and I also wondered um, why the Rochester people can't find someone to walk through the school once, uh, once a day. Uh, where I work, I have plenty of things that I do that are not in my job description. And I'm thinking if it's only gonna take an hour to walk through the school, I don't understand why working there they can't find someone to do that comment heard thank you very much leslie uh and finally 802 um last two digits nine one please star six to unmute and identify yourself please Nine one. Yep. Hi, Ethan. It's Caitlin McKinstry. How are you? Tonight? <laughs> um, yeah. So I don't think I really. I have one question and then a couple statements. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering. I know a librarian, at least from maybe I was looking at it incorrectly, but from this past year's budget, the the librarian position isn't shared. Is that something that could be shared, something that's being looked into as being shared? Caitlin, we actually, the librarian's position, we actually, um, we actually do share between the two schools. Oh, you do? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then I misread that. Oh, wait a minute. Caitlin, you know what? I, I no, said that wrong. 
No, no. I no, I said that wrong. The yeah. the person who's the librarian at Rochester art teacher. Um, is the art teacher at Stockbridge. So I, I stand corrected on that. Because I believe Donna Donna's the librarian at Stockbridge. Exactly. Donna's the librarian. Yep. Cynthia. Okay, so so then we either don't share art teachers or is that correct? We, we we do share an art teacher. We don't share a librarian. Uh, right. So we have one person that's doing. Oops. Hold on a sec, Lindy. Oh, that was me, Jenny. Oh, I was oh, waiting for the rest of Caitlin's questions. Sorry. I just wanted to comment that the the librarian in Stockbridge is also. I'm not sure Lindy her official title, but she does a lot of reading and literacy and humanities yeah she's a literacy instructor for four five six so she has she's a shared position within the building does that make sense okay all right yep just on the budget it looked like it was two separate independent librarians yes. okay so they wear shared hats in different ways within the building each campus okay. perfect um so my other ones are just kind of statements so Ethan, I really appreciate you mentioning uh, the regular updates. Even if you can't tell us everything that goes on in the executive session, that's fine. At least me personally, I'm not looking for you to tell me every gruesome detail. I just, as a community member, I would like an update because it's, it's kind of like crickets where we get a piece here and there, or then we hear some news through the grapevine, whatever. But to have just a regular update, it doesn't even have to be every meeting, but like every other meeting, or you had mentioned maybe coming out of executive and just giving us a summary of what was talked about, not necessarily the specifics that you can't talk about, mm -hmm. um, that I, I feel the community would be very happy to have that. Um, and my next comment would be to taking i agree with keith taking out that time frame in the beginning and i agree with carl and i um i i really think giving a time frame is is necessary um especially since there's already been a lot of conversation there's already been all this effort going into subdividing um and even now we had the woman from the rochester select board say they're willing to move forward so I don't understand why accepting the offer in a ninety in, in a three month period to just accept the offer is unreasonable. Um, and my next comment, I believe it should be my final one. Um, Amy had mentioned that she's unsure where the thirty six percent of people who approve dissolving are coming from. And I spoke with Justine on the phone earlier. It's, it's coming from a very big place of insecurity of our school and unequal treatment between the schools. And other board members have mentioned it. Other community members have mentioned it. It's been noted. It's been noticed and commented on. And that's a big, big reason. We don't have security that we're going to keep K through six here in our school. It's been mentioned several times by several different members about whether it's moving grades, whether it's closing the school, and you're probably sick of hearing this, but the merger was to save both K through six schools. And we have a lot of insecurity issues here in Stockbridge from my perspective and from other people I've spoken to that this is what we voted for. And it's continually being talked about either taken away or extra funds are going to Rochester or, or extra treatment is going over into Rochester school. There needs to be equal treatment between buildings, between schools. I understand Rochester is bigger, so in general they need more funds. But as far as updates, as far as anything budget related that's extra, it needs to go into both schools. The same amount of energy needs to go into both schools. And we need to stop talking about moving grades or closing a school. That's not what the merger was about. 
we need to know that we are going to keep our K through six school. That's where the 36% is coming from. I appreciate using the word insecurity. That's a, that's a very um, clear term. And that is, uh, and, and maybe it's, as you say, it's been said many times, but I, I hear that, um, that that's a very different, that's not an aggressive word. It's a, we're worried word. And I, I, re I really do hear that. Um, I would appreciate, you know, what kind of m motions we can make, because I want, I want the Stockbridge people to feel secure. That's the whole point of this, of us having these school board meetings. We're not perfect. We don't do it right every time. But I certainly want to reassure people, uh, because I'll speak personally, that is, that is what I'm working for is both schools in both communities. That's what I'm working for. And, you know, um, that's, I can't say it any more emphatically. Um, and, and, and maybe we need more statements of it like that. I mean, you did hear that everyone's for the merger and, and, and that that's what the merger, but maybe this is where this committee will be useful to go over the argument uh, documents. So we really know what this is about, but thank you for your comments. Thank you. Uh, we've gone through everybody once. Um, we're just over three hours. Uh, thank you all for your patience. Is there anybody else who has a, a, a further comment? Okay, there being none, I would say both of these uh, executive sessions with Jamie not here, his is moot. And the building, we've lost David and we've done that business for tonight. So I think that's moot. Um, so I believe I'm just getting back to the agenda, which I've, oh, it's right here. I was writing in the back of it. Um, I think we're, um, I didn't entertain a motion to adjourn. When's our next regular meeting? Uh, next meeting will be Tuesday, December 1st, 2020 at 6.30 p.m. via Google Meet. I, I would like to ask, though, uh, and it was a comment, and I, I am unclear, and I think it is unclear, is where the documents from this evening's ah, um, are going to be posted, where where a public have what asked. Are, what are our usual, um, can we include uh, the the Rochester Stockbridge um, Facebook page um, and, or should it just be on our website? What's the, what's our, what's our um, usual? We put it, we put it on our website. We've never, we're the, the, the concern we've always had that if we, if we support face group book A or front porch uh, forums yeah. B, that we're not being that we're not being inclusive. That instead we have a location that we are public about, and everyone comes to, and that is the one place okay. for central information. Then let's then we will post this document, um, and I believe we said with Jenny's comments. Is that correct? On on the Facebook page, or do we want to wait and do a second document with Jenny's comments? Well then, I'll I, think stay. I think until the comments are resolved, we should go yes. with the original document. Good, thank um, you, Carl. As we resolve comments, we update the document. That's you know. Right. You know Let's do point. that. It'll be an it'll be an ongoing place for update updates to be uh, included. So we will put the current document as David sent it to us on the on the bull on our website, and then as he comes up with a second document addressing Jenny's questions, well, that will be posted in due time after we've reviewed it. That sound good? Ray had a comment? Ray has his hand and he's the person behind the scenes for the website stuff, so. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I was, I was looking at numbers. Ray, what's up? So, uh, Ethan, um, it, it, it will, it's okay that I email those out to the same group of people who get the email for the reminder for the meeting? And those will go into the board documents folder tomorrow? Correct. Where the agendas are found? Yes. I just want to make sure those two things are okay. Yep, we voted on that tonight. Will and it also be posted on our website as well? Or are you saying this instead of? 
No, no, in addition. Thank you. In addition. Great, thank you. Good clarity, thank you, Carl. Thank you all, Jenny, for and thank you all for clarifying that. My brain was a little fuzzy, uh, didn't follow that. Are there any further details we need to address before we adjourn tonight? And thank you for your hard work tonight. Um, but I think I think we did well. Sorry if we disappointed some people, but I think we did well tonight. I move we adjourn. Thank you. All Second. in favor? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you all and good night.